And we're live. How's it going, everyone? Hi, Dr. Nick. Why is why is like the stream see why is like the stream screen black? What the hell? Is that just like a problem on my end or what? There we go. I see Blitz, Law, good old days are all here. So how is y'all doing? Gilded Archer. <clears throat> Oh, man. Honestly, really got to get to work on the this week's video because I just kind of haven't been doing that. But whatever, whatever, whatever will be fine. I ordered, I'd like just ordered pizza 30 minutes before stream began. We got like no groceries. <clears throat> oh, good old days. Kikaishi. Yeah, no. Uh, if you want to like finish Kikaishi, you ought to read the manga. Don't know why I never got another season, but whatever. Oh. Oh, AFK Journey. I keep getting ads for that, but I'm not fucking playing it. Yeah, yeah, we had that on itch, right? Oh, fuck. I forgot to do the thingy. Whoopsies. <clears throat> forgot to share the stream places. Clean my glasses. Holy shit. Uh, man, I need to <clears throat> uh, fucking play more Guilty Gear. I've been trying to learn ABBA, but yeah, she's hard. Well, not necessarily hard. It's just getting into, uh, what is it? Jealous Rage is very hard. If she's fighting a zoner, you're just fucking bone. There's, there's just no counterplay. It's a rough world out there. Okay, what the fuck? There's still something on my glasses. That's annoying. Chat, have you ever lost your glasses before? Is that like a thing that happens to you? Okay, so the game's running, but I don't see it opening. I I honestly have never lost any of my glasses. I have like six pairs. All the way from like fucking middle school. Okay, so the audio is on. I was wondering, what the fuck? Why don't I hear shit? Right. Is uh, <clears throat> scene and scene. Oh, hang on. Yeah, we're good. 
stream is still good for y'all because YouTube's yelling at me about the bitrate. Hello, Lightning Shadow, by the way. And show her on. Two star, yeah. Two star in um uh regular mode, but once they enter jealous rage, that shit bitch that bitch gets five stars. I'm gonna turn up this a bit. How's that chat? Five star. <clears throat> no, five stars means super easy. Right? Or is it the other way? Did, did the title screen change? I don't remember. Where's my fucking wrist brace, actually? I have not been wearing it at all since I got sick, which is a real problem. Mm, wait. What's up? See your toast, Morris. So the silver-tongued piggy is an exorcist, huh? A crooked one at that. Uh, at that, if how he's hacked out of the shop is any indicator how he conducts his work. Not that I blame him. Exorcists are a dying breed ever since Paul legislated strict restrictions. Since Paul re legislated strict restrictions on de demonic influence here on Earth, if he were to find out what I really am, I doubt he'd just let me leave town. To last. Let's go. Oh, okay. This ghost is dumb. Okay. <clears throat> First line of the day is nothing but silence. I see, I see, I see. You stare at your empty hands where your friend laid a second ago. It was almost unreal how everything unfolded so quickly. You scream and beat the, you scream and beat the ground until your hands are red and sore. Oh. King! You can only think about how you failed once again. This time, someone else was caught in the crossfire. Oh, yeah. he. Oh, yeah. The gay little llama boy got shot. That's what happened. That's what happened, chat. I remember. I remember. It was just like five days ago. Your breathing is shaking. With the amount of air you're quickly pulling into your lungs, you could have thought they failed you. You would have thought they failed you. Your vision is blurry. Thankfully, not from, lack, not from the lack of air, but from the tears that have been welling up. King, yep, 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 King, the fucking leopard guy from Tekken. He's in this. He's just a major character. Your mind freezes, trying to process an impossible challenge until... You hear a wee groan. Turning your head slowly, you see it's coming from the person who shot King. Miracle, your breathing is under control now. Your mind begins to focus. Wait, chill. Feel the urge to wrap your hands around that bastard's throat, but you don't. You need answers. You seize him by the collar of his shirt and pull his face close to yours. Oh no! You! Why did you do this? Why did you get King involved? What sick promise did Vendrake make? But there was some blink then opened his mouth without saying a word. His gawking is getting to you until he starts to and cry. I don't know what you're talking about. Where am I even? You killed my friend. Why'd you make a contract to be a, contract to be a freelancer? Kill? I don't know anything about that. I just did it as a goof. I just wanted to prove my friends that the ritual was fake. You rise to- Oh no! Oh no! Shit be whack, yo. What's possessed? Yeah, the freelancer was possessed. You rise to your feet and drag the pathetic person out of the door before throwing him onto the street. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my god! Fucking... <laughs> Look at him go! <laughs> ah, this is fucking adorable. I love him. Ooh, <laughs> if I ever see you in this town again, I'll send you to the underworld myself. 
It's usually the person screams as they crash into the pavement before running away. Yeah, we can see that. <laughs> you stumble back into the store. Shit's wrecked, yo. Legs begin to buckle as you're forced to grab onto the counter to hold yourself up. Thoughts and emotions return like an unwanted guest, knocking eagerly at the door for you to open it in your mind's eye. You clutch the left side of your chest. Yeah, but I know that silly sprite animation is, like, fucking complicated as hell. Like, I know getting that sp that bitch to spin must have taken, like, two hours of work just... Two hours of work just to make sure it, like, wouldn't crash the fucking game. Huh? You just pick up the sound of something vibrating. Your phone! Scanning the room, your eyes fall upon the weapon left on the floor. You walk over and pick up the cursed eye. The device starts to shake to force from the force of your grip. Then to throw it hard against the wall and be rid of it until you realize that something is displayed across the eye. A known non-demon entity sit, sent to Amari's lab for investigation. He blinks several times and reread the sentence. Sent it sent King to the underworld? He's not dead? Yeah. The new <clears throat> The news revitalizes your spirit. Without a shred of doubt, decide you need to go to the underworld and bring King back. But how do I get back down there? The brief spark of hope is at risk of being blo of blowing out. Even if I get there, I doubt Vendrick would just let me leave that easily again. I need help, but who? Angel Lucian. You listen by God. He could be a powerful alley. Pinge. But what about Morris? He's been in this town for a while. His tricks and knowledge of magic could come in handy. Maybe he knows a way to save King. Then again, the two of them would have their own agendas. Both want something out of you. Maybe it's better to call call on the favor Toast owes you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I need to save. How do I do that? Okay, um, I can do a poll. So the poll. Ooh, Lucian. Morris. Toast. Yeah, his name is just Toast. Yeah, that's true. I, I, none of them, aside from Lucian, is even qualified to help. I don't think either of them even know how to go back to hell, but, yeah. I do like Toast's name, though. Hmm. Hmm. Why does Toast feel indebted to uh, getting rid of the morphs, I guess? Yeah, that is true. This, this is literally Lucian's job. You make a good point, chat. So we're going with Lucian. I'm certain that Lucian can help me. You rush to the back room to get your bag and head out the store. Only remember you can't do that and leave the store closed. What am I doing? Call your phone and call Mike, asking him and his sister to cover your shift due to, due to an emergency with King. Oh, oh, calling in that favor pretty quickly. You, they agree to help without asking too many questions. Hey dude, by the way, why is there a fucking laser on the ground? What the shit was that? Ah, yeah, he his name was Brad. He died, went to hell, and became toast. I see, I see, I see. Quickly clean up any possible mess there was for the there was of the scuffle. Aside from the laser marks on the ground. After the pair come over, you take your leave and head and head to the Lazatus warehouse. I'm probably saying Lazatus wrong. Night encroaches with every passing second. 
You walk as fast as you can to your destination, and all the while your mind is pestered with thoughts of King being in prison or tortured in the underworld. Hey, but he's alive. They can't really do that, right? Granted, it's not like Kobu would know the rule. I see, he also changed. Once you arrive at the gates of the workshop, you see the crowd of workers exiting the premises. Premises. Where else takes on an orange hue from the rays of the setting sun. The building is wide enough to fit an entire football field in. And King once told you this is where many eateries, such as a shopping mall and sunny fruits, get their produce. In the sea of blue collar workers, you spot Lucian waiting at the other end of the gate, looking at his feet. You wait for the crowd to thin before approaching him. Lucian! The dog turns to you and smiles. Kobu! That's what she said. Kobu, you came! Finally, I've been waiting for so long, people started throwing coins at my feet. Why? Ready to return and settle back in settle in Ready to return and settle in back at your old job? Right, about that. Listen, can we find somewhere more private first? I got I need to find a good voice for Kobu. Whatever. He notices a serious look in your eyes and stands up upright. Alright, come with me. That's what she said. There's there's so many great jokes in this one. Some exotic dancer or male escort, fair enough. Like when Sasuke first showed up in Shippuden, Naruto just slipped a dollar bill into his um, waistband. I, I haven't watched Lion King 2, chat. I'm normal. He leads you around the com compound exterior to an alley filled with shipping trucks lined up to the back. After making sure no one is around, the angel leans against the back of one of the nearby vehicles. He will easily focus on his feet rather than meet his gaze. Why do I get the feeling this isn't... Why do I get the feeling this isn't about going back to the underworld? There was an attack at the store. The angel raises an eyebrow. What? Uh, a freelancer came and it shot King. A freelancer? Yes, those demons that make contracts with mortals so they can use their bodies to roam the earth. One of them came in. One of them came, that's what she said, and now I think King's trapped in the underworld. How do you know this? Pull out the eye from her bag and hand it to Lucian. Gives it a spin and even a quick shake. The eye somehow looks bemused by the ordeal. Indeed, if this is to be believed, whatever it got, whatever it shot, got sent back to some laboratory. Tells the eye back to you, and you store it snugly within your bag. That's why I need you help. That's why I need you to help me get to the underworld and save him. I don't know what's going to happen to him while he's down there. I don't see what there is to worry about. Don't all mortals end up there eventually? Not like this. Also, how dare you? We demons swore to minimize interference with mortal lives. That especially means not killing them. There, there. If he isn't supposed to be in the underworld, then Vindrick has to return him. He wouldn't, not without checking what King knows about me. Vindrick finds out, finds out he would never let him go. Mario's gonna modify King into a cyber. Oh, that'd be sick. Wait, why do we have new notice? Warehouse district? Nope. Freelancer. Uh, generally, uh, freelancer is a code word for demons in my country. Football and more relations. Change for some body. Some amount of time. Most of they say most of the time, order gets put in the situation there. You're taking part in the country. Generally, general law of the world on Earth. It's out of company business. Demon lord can send out demons as freelancers. Most of them send out a triplicate. Generally, each demon who has been approved must sit through a rotation out of a mortal, real snooze fest, or so I hear. You know, hour long talk about only a point of blinking. Oh, I wonder how many thugs my Drake sent more like me. That's rough. Really like the fucking world building you contain in the whatchamacallit. Little fucking notebook thingy. I don't know. You clench your fist tightly. All this fuss over a single soul. Why does this mortal mean that much to you? I mean, I don't know. He's been inside. I don't know. Do you think King, do you think Kobu's a, look, yeah, Kobu, Kobu's a top or a bottom? Both the names starts with K and I don't like that. Unless you see the shadow of an angel, you see the shadow of the angel move closer. Looking up, the angel smirks. Ugh. Do you have feelings for him? This isn't. This isn't funny. You're right. It's an unnecessary mortal emotion. The whole idea of demon in love with a mortal is a fairy tale. Lucian steps back and regains his regal composure. Can we focus? He's my friend. He's in danger. I have to save him. And you'll do anything to bring him back? Yes. 
Lucian tilts his head upwards. His stern gaze places a strong pressure upon your shoulders. No matter how hard you try, the feeling doesn't go away. as you right where he wants you. Then I'll help you if you return to the underworld and take your place as Demon Lord. As he speaks those words, the cold look in his deep blue eyes gives you goosebumps. Oh no! Then that means eternity back in the underworld stuck behind your lonely desk staring at paperwork. When you had Vendrix aid, you were messing up over... <sighs> when you had Vendrix aid, you were messing up over and over again. If you're about to f if you are to face it alone, would you sing would you single-handedly bring the underworld to its knees? Worst of all, could you live doing something that you feel no love for any longer? Um we got the choice on who to talk to about like bringing King like rescuing King and all that. We picked Lucian instead of Morris or Toast. Your lips tremble at the thought of going back. Silently, you slip your hands behind you. Okay. I'll go back, if you help me save King. Lucian's tail wags happily. Perfect, I can't wait to report back to Gary. You'll be so ecstatic. Ecstatic. Maybe you might even consider me good boy of the year. That's cringe, you're cringe. I'll say hello, Solar Knight. You simply look at it. Yeah. Simply look at him without saying a word. He remains unaware that you have your fingers crossed behind your back. Does that, does that mean anything? <laughs> Where do we go from here? To your home. What? But King, you are in no shape to be doing anything else for now. No way, we don't have time. We need to... Lucian flicks a finger at your forehead and you fall into your back. King isn't going anywhere and you know it. Now let's go back to your place so you can rest. There's much to do before we can even reach the underworld and I need you in one piece to do so. Which Cobus ends up with, uh, uh, that's what the choice does. Okay, okay, okay. You have nothing to say. Getting up feels like a monumental task now. Maybe he is right, not that you would admit it to him. He extends a hand out to, out to you to help you up. Fine, but you're sleeping on the sofa. I don't mind as long as I can finally take a warm shower. You're way too relaxed about all the- Have you just been fucking standing outside all day like a weirdo? You're way too relaxed about the- Just fucking standing outside? How contraire, Kobu. The smell of grease and gas is starting to fuse with my clothes. It's so unbecoming of me. Really? Your clothes? Well, forgive me, but us angels have more sensitive noses than others. He bends close to Snivium pulls back. His face- What the fuck? Just, there he goes! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> you fucking... You good? You lift your right arm and smell yourself. That's his deal. Welcome back to the warehouse entrance. You managed to hail a, ca hail a cab to take you both home. Yeah, Kobu is the MC. Who did you think it was? Also, hello, Zacho. And also, hello, Carlos. No. There. Hey. F oh, wow, there's a fucking blinking animation. That's cool. You hear a familiar voice somewhere out of reach. King. Hey. Hey. Voice comes in like a crashing tide before re reading, receding away from the edge of your consciousness. Your senses is numb and unbothered. A new sensation emerges, a growing tightness that pushes down your chest, soon accompanied by an aching weight that breaks your stasis. Wake up! Your eyes flutter open. Huh? We'll see. It takes a minute for your eyes to readjust to your lit room. Lucian's face comes into clarity. Angel's nose is alarmingly close to yours, and he sits directly atop of you. Wow, that's hot. It's Lucian. You're mumbling that mortal's name in your uncomfortable slumber, tossing and turning. Oh, was I? Sorry. You drape your arm over your eyes. What time is it? About an hour to midnight. Oh, I can't believe I slept that long. Neither could I, particularly the fact that you need sleep at all. Lucian pulls himself back and stands. He follows suit with the heavy groan. Well, oh, there he goes. <laughs> I love the way they fucking... Hey, sleep is great. Don't knock it till you try it. It's a waste of time. By the way, you're home, it's... He spends his wrist trying to come up with the right words to say next. Small? 
dilapidated, more like it. Uh, it's a decent place for convenience store clerk salary. Yeah, uh, it's a decent place for convenience store clerk salary, you know. Mm-hmm. And I see your finances are well spent. His eyes trailed off to a pile of video game cases stacked up passively in the corner of the room. His shoulders droop under the weight of Lucian's judgmental gaze. It's not important. It's my money. I can do what I want with it. How the mighty have fallen. Looks like you spent your years on Earth collecting junk. What is this? Lucian pulls out a jar with a fit. Oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> ah! That's not- It's just a joke. I was showing King. Doesn't mean anything. Try to shake the toy out of the jar, but it keeps getting snagged on the neck. You're smashing on the floor. It's palpable, but just as you look about the room for a place to chuck it, you catch the angle shaking his head. Defeated, you bury the jar underneath a beanbag topped with a pile of unwashed work clothes. Gross. Well, Kobu, since you're fine, I'll return to my guard duties. Guard duties? What's up with that? You didn't really expect me to just sit around while you slept, did you? I've been using my powers to set up protective charms around the apartment. Oh, thanks, man. Sounds like an exhausting job. Ugh, a few dozen charms is nothing for an angel of my caliber. Calibre. He says that, but upon looking closer, he notices his entire torso is drenched in sweat. He isn't fooling anyone. Hey, it's late. Why don't I cook us up something to eat before you go on a watch duty? Eating is for mortals. You know we don't need it. Hang on a minute. Aren't you borrowing someone's body? No, this is my own. And you haven't been eating or drinking since you got here. Nobody ever questioned that. It's not like I stopped to talk to the locals. It's too busy searching for you. And now that you found me, you'll stick out like a sore thumb in town if people see you avoiding food like the plague. Lucian throws his nose up in the air. Preposterous. I'm God's best angel. I don't need to put up an act, and I most certainly don't need food. Hey, who's the demon lord here? Ugh. Fine, but when Gary asks you, ask, you'd better give me a glowing, glowing, gl <laughs> Stop using big words. I'm going to fight him. A glowing appraisal of being so receptive of your, to your needs. You shake your head. Well, Lucian has a point that what? I mean, just because you don't need to eat or sleep, I mean, like, you should probably just do that. Golden weirdo. You just sit right there. I'll get us something. Sauntering over to the kitchen, you let out a long yawn. The sleep was not enough to refresh you completely. Nine words is big. Fuck. Nine letter words are big. Shit. I can read. He perused the cabinets, contemplating what to make. Something instant would be easy. Your hand reaches for the cupboard, and you pull out a little silver kettle and a cup of instant noodles, miso flavored. The gentle bubbling noise of boiling water dulls your senses. After all that's happened, the normalcy of cooking offers you a brief respite. Respite. A few minutes later, you walk out of the kitchen, a piping hot cup in hand. You motion him to join you when sitting on the floor. Here, eat this. Reaches to take the spork and cup from you. What's this? Since the noodles. Since the noodles. Considering you haven't eaten anything before, I picked out something mild for you. Miso flavor. Raises the cup and sniffs around the room. I smell seaweed, some spring onion, and something else I can't quite put my finger on. Oh, quit smelling it and eat. The noodles are going to get soggy. Still feels ridiculous to do. I honestly think, hmm, so far, favorite sprite in the game. Hang on. Oh, wait. We don't get character sprites for this, do we? Mm. I like Morse's sprite the best. You know, yeah. On the road up above. That's it. Only three locations. Hmm. It's one of the best ways to blend in with everyone here. Plus, it'll keep up your energy. Not sure it works for our kind, but it's fun and feels good. But it's fun and feels good. Lucian takes a deep breath and his shoulders fall. Fine, but if I get sick from this, it's on you. Turns out he's allergic to spring onions. Dipping the spork into the hot cup. Why do you have sporks? Pulls out a healthy amount of noodles and slurps them down. Lucian's eyes seem to widen and shine. Lucian's eyes seems to widen and shine. His disinterested expression nearly breaks into a smile until he catches you looking at him. Eh. He swallows. Hmm, you said this was miso. 
Yeah, pretty tasty, right? Miso flavored. We should never your gaze while silently taking a sip of the broth. Guess the mortals have made more amusing discoveries since they first found f since they first found fire. And that's the cheap stuff. Wait till you try something from a real cafe. We should continue to eat the noodles in silence, but his tail would wag every so often against the floor, producing a short but quick audible thumping no tapping noise. Yeah. Why? What is what is instant noodles and bones turning soft have to do with anything? Don't need to do it, but his life without burgers truly living. Oh fuck! Is that that's that's from like the uh, little like epilogue uh, episode with Krillin and eighteen, right? That was genuinely one of the cutest animations Team Four Star ever produced. Your heart feels lighter, but at the same time, your eyelids are struggling to stay open. What's what? Where's your where's your food? Oh, I didn't realize I ran out of cup noodles. It's okay. I'm not that hungry. The bones turn soft. What the fuck? What? What? A white lie. There are more in your cupboard, but you don't need Lucian to worry about your loss of appetite. He held out his cup noodles to you. Oh, he's a good boy. Eat. But I made that for you. You need this more than me. Eat. Said so yourself. This thing helps keep your energy up. Ain't no sudden gesture surprises you. Thanks. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh oh, you see that in the top right, top left chat? You take the noodle, you take the cup of noodles from him and take a bite. I'm guessing something about that one was like labeled wrong or the move position. Oh my God, no wonder they're using the, they're using hyper specific um, positions and stuff. Yeah, that's why he suddenly jumped. I'm guessing he like gestured forward like moved forward towards Kobu and then moved back. Yeah. Yeah. At first, it's a struggle to swallow the food. The mood just isn't there, but you push through. Slowly, the taste of miso fills your mouth. The warmth of the, the, warmth of the invigorating soup gives you a new life as it flows down into your stomach. Then you eat the soft sound of Lucian's tail flapping, accentuating your meal. A few minutes pass. Okay, is that thing gonna go away? We're gonna go back to the fucking main menu? Gosh. Oh my god. Oh, they've misspelled it. They forgot to put a space between Lucy and at, and at. Yeah. Ah, uh, I need it. Uh, I needed that. All right. I'm going to head out and keep watch. You just rest up. Come morning. I'll let you know what we need to do. Okay. Thanks. I'll just lie here for a bit before going to bed again. Lucian stands up and leaves you to your. Oh, there he goes. Your thoughts. Outside, the cool night breeze blows up against blows against the angels against the angel's fur. It's almost time for the meeting. Looks around to make sure he's alone before climbing onto the handrail of the balcony. His hair and ears float ever so slightly, as though carried by an updraft. Steps forward, remains suspended in the midair. A pair of white wings sprout from his back, leaning upwards. He begins his ascent at a steady pace. He's going to heaven. So long before the angel picks up speed and zooms upward past the apartment roof. Towards the cloud, the sound of rushing wind fills his ears. Yet before he could gaze the, graze the clouds, the pull of gravity brings him back down. What? Oh no! Lucian plummets back to the earth. Fly, fly, fly! Concentrates all his men mental faculty into reactivating his powers. Just as the apartment roof comes into view, his wings reactivate again. He manages to halt his fall. He glides downwards onto the apartment's tiled roof, nearly tripping as he lands. His breathing is erratic. What? What's going on with my powers? He looks at his trembling hands and clutches them tightly. The angel stands in silence for a minute before taking one long breath. This is just a little setback. He probably tidies up his hair and strings his shirt. Nothing I can't handle. Dog snaps his fingers and a bright yellow ring forms above his head. Lucian drags the halo to his front. He taps the left side of the halo and it begins to ring. 
Okay, stay calm. Sound confident. Make a good impression. Just say hello with confidence. Hello, Lord Gary. I Halo connects to the other person on the line. Go for Gary. Yes, hello. Hi, Gary, sir, Lord. I report to make. Whoa, whoa. Cool your jets. Who am I talking to? Lucian's mind goes blank for a second, but he manages to recompose himself. Right, sorry. It's me, Lucian. Lucian, uh, Lucian from the kitchen department? No, I'm Lucian, the angel you sent to find. Volume of Lucian's vo Find Kobu. Oh, okay, okay. My, oh, right, my bad. I've just been so swamped with all these commissions to draw. Listen to this. One soul wants to experience what it's like to be a superhero that saves a city with powers of accounting. I was like, that's new, I guess. Never tried a superhero with powers in accounting before. I got it already, but the customer didn't like it. Gary laughs heartily and the halo jiggles and halo jiggles and tandem. So that's what God does, just draws commissions about like fucking realities and stuff. Is a living world just his Divin Art page? Soul gave some notes to change it, but whoops, I did it all on the same layer. Joke's on me, I guess. My lord. You do great work. They should appreciate the time and energy you put into each blueprint. Thanks, Lucian. Anyways, I'm going off topic. Can we do what are we talking about? Right, that. Is anyone around you? No. Aside from the landlord, this apartment building is only has Kobu here. This area is mostly deserted. Good, you found him. Who is my favorite demon? He's heavier and highly unco he's heavier and highly uncooperative. He called him fat. He's fat and lazy. That's rude. Gary chuckles. At least he sounds like he's eating, right? What else? Just one problem after another, my lord. There's been an attack here by agents from the underworld. A mortal was taken hot. A mortal was taken as hostage, and Kobu wants to save him. A mortal? What do you? A mortal? What do you intend to do about that? Personally, I don't think it's a big deal. We'll save the mortal when we infiltrate the underworld. We go in, get the jump on Vendrake, and take him out. So the mission comes first, then. Uh, eh, always, my lord. Be discreet as best you can. It's not a matter if Vendrake will find out that we're helping Kobu, but a matter of when. And when that happens, I have to disregard any connections you have with our company. Can I risk another war between our two sides? I understand, my lord. Anything for up above. Thank you, Lucian. So what else can you tell me about the area you're in? It's an anomaly of a town, my lord. There are ghosts and exorcists running about? Do you have any souls with information about this place? I'd like to be prepared. I'm gonna develop a thing for, oh, gross. Sure, let me look it up. What's the town's name? Kibbleton. <laughs> Lord Gary? Lord Gary? Sorry, I opened a funny video by mistake. Ah. Meant to note to self. I know what video Gary finds so funny so I can find more for him. God, you're such a brown noser. Interesting. Seems that we don't have a single soul from that town. What? What does that mean? Oh, here's an interesting memo. Kibbleton is labeled as a red zone by the underworld. And a red zone is? I wish I could tell you, but my predecessor didn't write anything else other than red zone. Angels and demons advise to stay away. No souls can be collected from the, these areas. Try asking Kobu, see what he knows about it. Right. Right, that's fucking concerning. Red zone, all these souls, fuck them. They're dumb, they suck. They just get to wander around in purgatory, I guess. <laughs> and what about the status of finding, the, what about the status of finding the under, finding the underworld gate? Good news on that part, the halo, <clears throat> the halo detected the energy presence of a gate in this town, but I haven't pinpointed, pinpointed its, pinpointed its specific location. A gate in a red zone area, peculiar, don't you think? Spoopy. I wouldn't know, are the two related? I'm enjoying this conversation Lucian's having with Gary. It's just an underworld gate isn't something any, someone would, someone would build for the fun of it. Be careful. Have you noticed anything unusual happening to you? Um, Lucian shovels his feet, struggles to swallow as he finds the right words to say. I've maybe noticed my wings aren't working right just now. Lucian. It's fine, it's fine. You have my word, I won't fail. Lucian bites his lower lip. Brief seconds of silence for Gary's side is tantamount to awaiting the guillotine from coming down. 
Well, I trust you have it under control, and I hope to hear good news during our next call. Lucian breathes a sigh of relief. Thank you, Lord Gary. And Lucian? Yes? Good job. Lucian's eyes beam brightly. His tail wags so much energy it could practically fly off. Aw, oh, look at him. Little, little, little baby. Is that why it's a red zone? Demons and angels and stuff just lose their power while they're here? It's like, wait a minute. Just, does this place just fucking drain our powers? What the shit? Call ends and the halo disappears. Yes! His heart is jumping for joy and so is he. Bouncing from left to right, the only thing that occupies Lucian's thoughts is God's compliment. Whatever's making that noise, shut up! Lucian stops his little happy ceremony and tries to recompose himself. Barely able to leave the other red zones. I see, I see, I see! Oh, wait, fuck. Is Kobu kind of trapped here? Can you, like, not leave it? I nearly forgot myself there. Back to my patrols. Shin floats back down and continues his duties for the rest of the night. I love the little bed. It's cute. Next day, you awaken before your alarm rings. Aw, oh, man, that sucks. You set up from why do you why why is everyone else in chat so much better at remembering things that happen in visual novels than I am? I'm the one reading this bitch. You set up from bed and begin your begin your routine. Like walk like little like clockwork, the siblings who took over your shift would be expecting you soon. After getting dressed and had drawn downing a can of coffee, you head out. Good morning, Kobu. Up and up and up early and ready to face battle? Oh hey, morning to you too. I'm going to work. Excuse me? Work at the convenience store. It's almost my shift. I switched mine with Mike and Anna yesterday. Lucian frowns. I'm going to pretend that this is your attempt at a lighthearted joke. We have more serious things to attend to. Crossing your arms, you glare at Lucian, and I'm amused. Hey, well, yeah, I have a very serious thing called rent I need to afford. I can't exactly not show. I know what we need to do, all right, but this is important too. I want to keep using my unit as a base of operations. I need cash to pay rent. Speaking of which, you're paying half of it too. Me? Pay rent? That's what I said. I'm not letting an angel mooch off of me. Lucian gets a job. What job will he get? I'm working up before the one. I've done that a few times and it sucks. I always say the greatest uh, feeling in life is not getting married. It's not the birth of your children. It's waking up past noon, remembering you don't have a thing to do. So you turn back over and go back to sleep. That's the greatest feeling in the fucking world right there. You walk past Lucian. Wait. As the sun rises, the streets light, the street lights flicker down. You walk in, your walk is serenaded by rumbling cars and creaky cyclists who pass by you. Pass you by. Oh fuck, is Kobu gonna hire um fucking uh Lucian at his job? Well, since King is dead, we need someone to fill his shift. Lucian, you want a job, right? You watch your feet as you walk. There's nothing you want to think about. All there is is just feet. Gross. Keep your feet away from my keep your feet away from my everything. Expectedly, Lucian is walking next to you, not even trying to hide his exasperated size. You know he's trying to get your attention. Dude, I don't know if saying that much is good for you. Well, forgive me, but I can't help but be disinterested in your attempts at cosplaying immortal. Oh, oh, you know what cosplaying is? I've overheard what other souls have mentioned. It's like being blinded by a lie so great that every fiber of your body, of your body and mind, believes that you're someone else. No, well, no, what? No, absolutely, no. No! Also, I'm not cosplaying. This is my job. You of all people should know should know how important fulfilling your duties is. And what duty are you fulfilling by hiding here all these years? Not dying? You stop walking and glare at the angel. He looks back at you, unfazed. You know what? I'd rather we talk about the, your plan to get us to the underworld. Yishin smirks and tilts his nose upwards. <laughs> finally. Finally, a better use of our time. So, after talking to Gary last night... You talked to Gary? Why wasn't I involved? Both continue walking to the store. Gary is busy running up above. Besides, he wants to keep everyone safe. 
less he directs the less he is directly involved in what we're doing the less risk we the less we risk a war with with Vindrake. he frowned somehow the idea of your only ally in this whole soul business is avoiding you does not sit right so what did you guys think of we're sticking to the original plan we find an underworld gate and use it to get you home an underworld gate know about it uh, the extended downward open palm while rocking it slightly. By the way, I've detected a presence of detected the presence of one in this town. That's weird. Gary thought so too, but it doesn't change the fact that we need to find it, and I need your help to do that. After all, you've been around here long enough that knowledge of that you've been around. <laughs> After all, you've been around here long enough that no you you've been around here long enough. That knowledge will finally be of some use. Mm. Well, then you'll have to wait till after my shift is over. What am I supposed to do until then? I don't know. I mean, you don't have to wait if you don't want to. Just go find the gate on your own first, and risk letting you getting and risk you rest and risk letting you get it getting risk letting you getting attacked. Not a chance. I'm staying close. Fine, then just search near the store here, and we'll continue after work. I can't. I can't hope for now. What about during lunchtime? My lunch is at 1 p.m., and that's like an hour long. I don't think we'd find that much time if we even tried. Lishin shakes his head. He sigh, just seems like he sigh. It just seems like there's no pleasing this angel. Your mind steps back and remember that you have to handle the store all on your own. You rack your brain for a solution. Hang on. Why not work at the I fucking knew it! Lucian gets a new job as a store boy. Hang on. Why not work at the store with me? That way you and I can keep the same schedule, plus I get someone to share the workload with me. Lucian scoffs. Now why would I want to do that? Even if I have to find work to pay your so-called rent, there should be better jobs out there for me. It's not that bad. I mean, sure, sometimes work can be tough. Like, remember how some customers will ask for the craziest request, like topping their bento boxes with candy before microwaving it. He's also having to get rid of the occasional drunk that wanders into the store during the night shift. They think they can sleep inside. Then there's the hours of heavy lifting and sorting with sorting with barely any pay. All that matters is that you've got a friend along the ride with you, and I'll knowledge you'll eat. Knowledge that you'll eat enough to survive another month. So how about the Oh, oh no. Bye. The angel's walking off in the opposite direction. I'll see you at lunch. And so your shift begins. Upon entering the store, the two siblings rush over to ask if King is okay. He probably made up a story that King had to leave the leave the state due to a family emergency, that he would be uncon uncontactable for a while. Mike and Anna are placated when he told them King was fine and that he would be back soon. And they promise that you hope will come true. As a host or something. Hell yeah. I need art of Lucian and Suzuka's suit from the Hasamo event. You know which one? Stat. For fa fashionista. Seaside fashionista. There we go. With King's absence, the three of you decide to put up a sign looking for a new recruit to help with work. Till then, you have to work through your shift on your own. Task made harder. <sighs> Yawn. The task made harder with the recent addition of your task's manager. The brother reassures you that King's guide will that King's guide will get you through it. If there are any emergencies, he's a phone call away. He would only help with this spot depositing. He would only help with depositing the earnings of the day into the company bank account. You have no choice but to go along with the plan. The duo return home, leaving you in charge. You find King's guide lying on the counter. Dressing the cover, you feel the, th the tough wrinkle wrinkle of the paper King used to decorate it. Oh, that's cute. Pick up the book and open the first page. There's a sticky note inside. I believe in you, King. Damn it, King. Been soul crushed like he just fought Yami, like he just dual dual Yami Yugi. Hit that bitch with the motherfucking mind crush.
You feel tears building up, but you slap your cheeks to snap, you out, snap out of it. <laughs> Time for crying will come later, after King is saved. Throughout the first half of the day, you busily restock the shelves and learn to take inventory of what needs to be reordered. All the while, the customers come and go, forcing you to juggle between stock, stock deck, and service. Running yourself ragged, even your brief moments of peace are spent reading through the manual, unable to commit much to memory before your next interruption. Yugi's penalty game from the OG Yu-Gi-Oh, where he just sets a nigga on fire. Customer, hello, welcome to Sun- Oh. Oh, please, do go on. Don't let me stop you from doing your job. What's up, Lucian? It's lunchtime. I'm here to report my findings. Is that late already? I'm beaten hungry. Can we talk about it over lunch? Lucian raises an eyebrow. Hmm, our mortar customs. How fun. Come on, I'm closing this door. After locking the door, you drag the reluctant angel to a nearby cafe. He's gonna enjoy himself. On the outside, the single story cafe has a quaint, rustic feel to it. Ooh. Nice. Loving this BGM. Bigum. On the outside, the single story cafe. I read this before. Ta da! Six fan. Lucian looks at the shop sign, then back to you. His face is, his face is deadpan as ever. The moment you step into the cafe, the smell of potatoes frying from the kitchen stirs your appetite. Hell yeah! Potatoes! Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. A lady dressed in bright red, dressed in a bright red dress, approaches with two menus in her hands. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, you can. Afternoon there. The lady is instantly drawn towards the angelic companion. You'll deja vu from the time from the time of the supermarket sale. Why does everyone want to hop the hop the angel's bone? What new location? Six fan. I usually come to Six Fan Cafe near the beginning of the month, because that's when I actually have enough money to spend eating out. The place used to be an empty shop front before some guy came over to rent it last year. If I recall correctly, it started out as a tour agency a tour agency of some sort, and it takes you around the town on a supernatural trip, but it went bust after a few months. The owner of Six Fan is said to be related to the guy who ran the tour agency before. I wonder what happened to him. Yeah, he looks like he wears gucky. Gucky and Louis Vuitton. Didn't anyone tell you you look like one of those magazine models? If need work, I'm looking for an extra pair of hands to help me run the cafe. Uh, no thank you, more. Oh, you have a Lucian in the stomach. Her. You're hiring? Love to. Maybe you can tell us more about it after lunch. She smiles warmly and doesn't seem to think too much about your reaction. Oh, I'm gonna go as far as dyeing my hair. Yeah, bleaching it. I honestly need to get a haircut or fucking something. I've just been letting my hair grow out for so long. So, uh, I don't like it. All right, right this way then, fellas. The waitress escorts you both to a nearby booth seat. Nice, I love booths. They, they, you, you, booths are usually so much more comfortable than chairs. You fellas want to look at the menu? Oh, sure. She hands you each, she hands you each menu before writing a notepad and pencil that was tucked away in her apron. Cute. I have lunch set A. Fish and chips, the glass. Fish and chips, the glass of apple soda. I would kill for some apple soda right now. What about you, handsome? Um, that's okay. I'm not one. I'm not one for eating. She puts her hands on her hips. You expect me to believe you can maintain that build, that shiny coat of fur, fur of yours by skipping meals? I assure you, I'm built differently than usual. Cus you just feed normal, Lucian. Shut up. <laughs> And I, and I assure you, my chef, Neil, has never cooked up a bad meal. Order something. If you don't like it, your meal's on me. Just do it, dude. You got nothing to lose. Lucian sighs. Uh, give me whatever it is he's having. Got it. Neil, give me two set A's! Wait until the lady's out of earshot. <laughs> to get any talking. See? That wasn't so bad. He's him. Let's not forget, you also got a job offer. Not that it would do much good. Look around. This cafe will not survive through the year in this state. Glancing around, you notice there are only a handful of customers. Oh no! Oh no! It's an easy sight since it's peak lunch hour. Oh no! We can worry about that later. You need the job and a piece of advice. Cool it with the whole mortal thing. P 
people think you're weird if you refer to them as that. But that's what they are. Yeah, but they don't call each other that. Even so, people don't acknowledge that. Anyways, we're getting off topic about the Underworld Gate. There's still no sign of it during there's still no sign of it during my short reconnaissance. No biggie, we'll go looking for it later. How hold off from finishing your sins when you see the waitress returning with your drinks. Thanks. She smiles and heads back into the kitchen. Where were we? Alright. How were you searching for this again in the first place? I use this. He snaps his fingers and a halo appears above him. What? Vision grabs a halo and shows it to you. This is my halo. What are you doing? Put that away or people will see. Try to keep your voice down while swatting the air, signaling the angel to quickly put it aside. Oh, don't worry, Gary made, Gary made sure this device is not visible to mortals. Plus, whenever it's active, it creates a special cone around us that masks our conversations. Now, that's why things are all... Oh, oh, little... Oh, that's fucking sick. Don't want to ask how they did that, but that's fucking sick. Oh, what are they hearing then? I want to have... That's great. Who's going to be the mother? You. Dios mio. Just turn it off. It'll cause most more problems we get ourselves in trouble over misunderstanding. Alright, and we just have to be more careful and you need to speak softer. Taps the halo to disable its filtering functions. Regardless, we can use the halo to find the gates later. It'll beat more frequently the closer we are to it. So it's like a fucking raider. Oh, who's the father? They're on. They're, they go on a fucking. Uh, mm. Lucian, Kobu, and Morris on on Murray, trying to figure out who's the father. Sounds simple enough. Anything else? Yes. Lucian leans in close, staring you down intensely. I need to pick your brain on something. Okay. Shoot. What do you know about this town? Pretty much the same thing as you when they put in their travel brochures online. Kibbleton's a small town that's trying to revitalize itself so more people will come and stay here. That's all? There's nothing weird about this place? Well, there's the one cult and gang running around the town. But other than that, I haven't noticed much. What about this town's status as a red zone? What about it? It just means demons aren't supposed to be here. This town's souls are unable to reach the underworld. And that would be because... I don't know. It's all I can remember from those boring old files. Oh, I need more than that. Have you been to other red zones? Yeah, two others. A city and another countryside town. And did anything strike you as out of the ordinary? Not really. I think some mega corporation was in the city. As in recall, everyone worked for them, and the countryside town was super traditional. They worshipped some kind of dragon god, which means, which I mean, that's nice and all, but eh, the farm life was not for me. Lucian leans back in his seat and crosses his arms. What about you? Haven't you been in a red zone before? This is my first time. I've only been on Earth for a few months. The Halo never took me to a red zone when it was pinpointing your location. Alright, then why exactly are you so worried about these red zones? Just... I feel like my powers are diminished while I'm here. I cannot explain why. Are you joking? Are we going to defend ourselves from another freelancer attack? Don't worry about it. I can still take I can still take on any two-bit demon that comes our way. You narrow your eyes. I can do it, alright? I can do it alright. Rest assured you have the finest angel on your side. Not 100 percent confident in Lucian's words, but you keep that to yourself. Starting a quarrel over these feelings will get you nowhere. Reluctantly, you decide to worry about this when the time comes. What do you think the waitress's name is, chat? I've been to two other red zones before I arrived in Kibbleton. I've got to be honest, I can't remember my time in detail with me running for a lot of life and all. There was a city, had this mega corporation like everyone was working for, like the whole company had its hands in the city's activities. Second place was nice, they all had this dragon god they celebrated. It was a nice place, but I felt like it didn't belong there if I wasn't a fan of their god. So far, most of the gang problem in New Colton Town, Kibbleton's pretty alright. If what Lucian says is true, that could explain why Kobu just never recovered. Fucking, <laughs> oh, fucking, I 
fucking I am a fucking one thing I uh, love about uh uh Spike's family is that they always give those extraneous side characters the goofiest fucking names. Like there was this fucking college student, a pseudomy graduate uh, that was gonna graduate soon, and it was gonna be like need a job soon. No oh, oh god, I love that. The waitress interrupts both of you with your orders. A plate of two fish fillets coated with flour, fried to a beautiful golden brown. Fuck yeah! Summoning the fish is a side of crispy shoestring fries on a bed of crisp green salad. Hell yeah. Normal food instantly eases your tension and your worries melt away. Waku waku. What about that? Isn't that what the fucking thing from the Muppet says? There's just something special about the food in this cafe that always makes you feel better. Someone else cooking it. Tends to always help. He also plays two ram ram ramnikins? One of tart. What's a fucking ramnikin? Ramikin. What is that? Quit making up words, visual novel. Ramikin. Oh. A rib sauce cup? Yeah, might die. That's his name. I'm guessing Might is just their last name. That's weird. Not as weird as Luffy's last name just being fucking Monkey. He also places two ramekins on the table. One for tartar sauce and the other mayonnaise. Yee. You know, I tried creme brulee before and I realized I just don't like cream. Cream's gross. Eat up, boy. Eat up, boys. I just felt like grabbing something that one meat's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> hmm. Ramekins are like tiny pie molds. Yeah, they're nice. Retweeting something on Twitter. DJ is making the sign of the cross. He's a space Christian. We're all well aware of questionable food. What? Cream's just not good. Creme brulee is kind of ass. <laughs> Duncan has released alcoholic beverages, including spiked coffee and iced tea. Fuck yeah. Getting closer to D. It probably stands for D, you know, D E E. That would totally be something Oda does. <laughs> like, what does the D stand for? D E E. D stands for D. And Oda would fucking find. And Oda would probably find that hilarious. One thing I do love about One Piece is that Oda just has a wonderful sense of humor and how he doesn't take himself too seriously. If he wants to put a stupid joke in One Piece, he's putting a dumb fucking joke in One Piece. He smiles eagerly at Lucian. And if you like this, imagine getting free lunch every day just by being part of the team. Fascinating, but I assure you, won't be easily persuaded by some cooked fish. He cuts in the fish and takes a bite. Oh. Face so contorts into a look of fear bliss and horror when he realizes the sound he just made. That just... He looks at you, but you're just enjoying the show. The waitress giggles. The food was hot, that's all. Sure thing, golden boy. If you like that, just try it with some sauce. Points the ramekins in front of you both. Jolly Melody starts playing from her apron. Oh, one sec. She pulls out her phone and you swear her face turns pale white. Sorry, I've got to take this. Uh-oh. Oh, is she good? Waitress rushes off in the kitchen before you have a chance to thank her. Decide not to pay her sudden dis disappearance any, any heed. Lucian takes another cut from his filet and observes the piece of fish in front of him. What, a, what do you mean, Sriracha? He dips it in tartar sauce and mayonnaise before eating. Stein maintains his cool composure. It ain't, yet you can hear the sound of Lucian's sail thrashing against the seat. You shake your head slightly and shout down with Lucian. Ha! Ha! Come to the end of the meal, the waitress returns with the bill. So how was it, golden boy? Mm, it was... acceptable. God, the food is great as usual. Compliments to the chef. <laughs> they hit the pentagon! <laughs> Fucking now I want to make it be me so it's like, 
Cool, you sure this will get you back in tail? I'm sure. Now hit the second tower. <laughs> Fucking, oh my god, that's stupid, but I want to do it. <laughs> Ugh. I'm happy to hear that. I'll pass it on to him. Now, if you work here, our chef can whip you up something tasty anytime. Anytime. I promise to pay his fare too. What? Why are you looking for a new hire, by the way? No offense, but things look a little, uh... Oh, I know. My little shop has been struggling against the older ones that have been here for years. So I've been thinking that my shop needs a little gimmick. Feel like royalty with a handsome staff at Six Fan. Handsome staff? Thought it was just you here. Of course not. Neil's just as, mana Neil's just as mana magnetic looking as you are. Hey, Neil, get out here! Single black hand extends in the kitchen window and waves a finger back to the waitress, telling her off. Oh, he's shy, but a nice guy. So what do you say? Hmm. Lucian puts a finger to his chin as he thinks. Looks to you as though seeking up your opinion on the matter. Give him a thumbs up. Fine, I guess it won't be too bad to work here. Mainly because it saves me the time I'd spend looking for some other menial job. Manners. Here's my resume. Lucian pulls out a stack of paper from his right pocket and hands it to the stunned waitress. This little magic trick, this little, this little, ma his, his little magic trick nearly caused you to choke on a fry. She looks at the document in her hands with sudden silence. What? You carry all that around with you? Well, where I come from, a chance for a promotion can come anytime. So you've got to be ready. Boyfriend rental cafe, that'd be nice. Oh wow, you worked in a hotel before. That's perfect, I'll give the rest a look through. I'll call you when it's time to start work. Just like that? No interview? Naturally, my ta naturally, my talents are undeniable. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> Here, let's go with that. Not the fact that he's fucking hot. <laughs> he's I believe that at least Ren will be easier for a bit. But you also wonder if Lucian will fit in well without you being here. To give him some pointers and tips on how to be human. Either way, as your lunch time approaches its end, you return to the convenience store. Lucian hangs about in the back room until his shift is over. Come dusk, the search for the gate begins again. Well, hey, we're back here. Hey! Singing in an elevator, King sits bound and gagged from head to toe. That's what she said. Well, no, I suppose the best joke could be that's hot. So soreness around his butt. Okay, never mind. Mm. No jokes about that. You beat me to it, game. Each time the elevator changes direction, King lurches from side to side, throwing myself seemingly chasing after some far off destination. King rests his head against the cool metallic wall, too tired to continue his struggle against his bindings. Eyes rise upward to the demon who has his back turned to him. Yeah. Dark bindings along his mouth start to curve, curve further around King's face, the tip resembling a dog egg peep the tip resembling a dog's head peeking out of the corner of his eyes. Rose says you have a nice ass. Mm hmm. Forrest looks over his shoulder and flashes a smile. Thanks, glad someone noticed the effort that went into training my glutes. Demon flexes his bubbly posterior. Buddy! King shakes his head frantically. Mmm. Says to one gag him. Not a chance. I have a, a hard I, bleh, I have a hard enough time figuring out what to do without you yelling in my ears. Hmm. Dude saying he won't talk much, just wants just doesn't like me stubbing his nose. Hey, that's mean. As if I like being wrapped around you with your uh, soft fleece. Feels weird touching a mortal. Cordis turns around. Just ignore him. Can't do anything to you. Hmm. Bro, bro, he's saying he's going to lick me. Ew. Relax, that's not. Ah, he's doing it, bro. I can feel a slimy tongue spraying his mortal saliva on me. Cordis shakes his head and lets out a low growl. Fine, fine, return. Money on King's mouth unravels and slows up Fortis' arm. That must be gross. King's jaw drops as he watches the previously sentient shadow revert to a lifeless tattoo. Fortis points at the stunned alpaca. Now zip it. Where's he going back on you? That's what she said. Forrest points to his right arm. Exhausted, King presses his face against the coin of service beside him. Uh, wish I could see where we were going. The spot where his head meets his metal, the metal swirls open, granting him a window to the space outside. Peering through the porthole, like spot, like, like spot, he sees por portraits floating around a murky abyss. Like the planet circling the sun, the paintings appear to move in the same manner. What they are circling around remains to be seen. The alpaca shifts his attention back to the demon. Forrest keeps mumbling to himself. 
gently peruses the elevator control panel and decisively reaching out for buttons before changing his mind. Where are we going? This elevator ride feels like it's been going on for too long. Just give me a minute. Thinking about where to put you, maybe here? Presses a combination of buttons and the elevator comes to a halt. Door opens up at... Okay, I think he's showering. Crap, sorry dudes! Or just rapidly press another button so the door can close and begin moving again. The elevator jolts, bring King's motion sickness with with it again. With again. Did that guy have like three Oh my god! Yes, and don't ask. Now about now, how about here? Before his inputs an examination, King learns leans to the side and squints to see the buttons. This is May, the panel is decorated with symbols beyond his comprehension. It's not long before the elevator comes to a stop again. The door opens to a desert plain. The only one thing that stands out, a silent mass of people huddled around something. The alpaca blinks. Before him are beings on their knees, looking up in reverence. The outline of their incorporeal bodies is barely maintained as the whips, wisp of their essence flow back and forth like smoke in the wind. <sighs> a mixture of shock and fascination dawns on King as he realizes that these, these ethereal, what these ethereal beings are. Souls. There's something unnerving about the whole display. King gulps as his eyes slowly trail up every trail up to the very front of the crowd. Stone sculpture. Stone culture as its stone sculpture as its back turned against against everyone, but something already feels amiss. It's like fucking Squid Game. What's that sound? King starts to hear a beating sound escalating with each passing second. The drumming sound that fills his ears is none other than the alpaca, alpaca's own heartbeat. Doesn't mean fixated on the statue, unable to look away, not out of awe, but of fear. The possibility is so grim, so terrible, may come to pass if he looks away. The fear grips King's entire core as, it tears, as tears start to stream down his eyes. The metal door slides slide shut, obscuring the statue entirely. King gasps, blinking rapidly over his dry eyes. Mm, might be a bit too intense for this pipsqueak. What room was that? It's one of the mildest, it's one of the mildest physical torture chambers. Thought it could work for you. What was that thing? Couldn't stop looking at it. Mm, yeah, that should be the demon Akios. They want to find out what happens to the souls that stops looking at them. What in the world made you think that would be a safe safe place for me? I don't know. Akios seem pretty popular with mortal souls. Your kind, seems, your kind seem, can't seem to take your eyes off them. I don't think those souls have a choice in the matter. Fine, I'm using plan B. Horace presses on a series of buttons and the elevator opens up to a plain looking office space. Let's go. Pulls King up by he pulls King up by his bindings and places the mortal on his shoulder. Being carried by a big strong man would be more fun if I wasn't being held against my will. Water Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's like you you think you would do some research on what mortals need to not die. Fortis walks across the room and pulls out a pair of keys to open the pantry door. <laughs> Just gets stuck in the fucking Once inside, he drops the alpaca on his butt and locks the room. Now, oh, if you're gonna bruise my peaches, you did a good job. That's what oh God, I, I made too many. That's what she said jokes. Fortis extends his hand out and the bindings unravel. King gets up and scans the area. Looks like an average looking pantry room down to the distinctive smell. Well, Venric said to stuff you in a pantry, so here you are. I'm not getting paid enough to look for rooms. Need a toilet? It'll be the door next to the sink. That's not sanitary. Or oh, there's the coffee machine where it goes on and on. But King is lost in his thoughts. Eyes fall upon the key ring dangling out the demon's pack jacket pocket. If that key could escape the pantry and make a run for the elevator. Could he go home? Could warn Kobu that Vendrake's coming? Sound of a crimson portal ripping open in the middle of the room. In the middle of the room derails King's train of thought. Wait, you're leaving? Enjoy your afterlife. Horace heads to the portal. Wait! What now? I mean, what am I going to do about food? Like I said, just eat whatever whatever's in the fridge. King walks over and opens the fridge. He instantly reels back. Is that moldy cheese and- Oh my god, there's an eyeball in that container of leftovers. I can't eat these. Fortis rolls his eyes. Come on, food is food. It's not like trying to build muscle or anything. It's really not. That could make him sick. Ping pong, ping. Hello, hello? Can you guys hear me? Cat General's voice comes through. Oh, fuck, Amari. That's Amari, was it? The PA system. Amari? That sounds like the voice of the demon with all those arms. Why is he making an announcement here? Yes, I see you guys on my monitor. Figured you'd bring him to the pantry. 
Really? How would you even know I'd bring him here? Simple, I infer that you'd either take Vendrake's words literally, or do you realize that there's no safer place for him but here? Oh, really now? If you're that sure, those were the only things I would have done. There really is, there is a silence that drags on for a few seconds before Amari responds. That, and I bugged the mortal when you were walking out with him. Walking out with him. Gosh, people are loud. If he died, imagine if he died, there'd be, he's been in pretty big trouble. Yeah, typical, yeah, typical, yeah, typical Amare. Gotta work on my deliveries. A small uh, spider bot, no bigger than a grain of rice, leaps off King's shoulder. Oh shit, chat, uh, leaps off King's shoulder. A notice and crawls up to the ceiling, set on a PA speaker. Chat, we haven't talked about Master Duel yet. New pack. It's fucking wild. Chat. Oh my god. Oh my god. Konami's off their fucking shits. Yeah. Yeah. Bonfire. Why the fuck is that here? <laughs> like right now, it's not going to do too much. It's just going to make uh, Diabella Star annoying. Like even more annoying. Like, I think the reason they released it now is so that, like, they could, that, like, once Diabellstar, like, Diabellstar leaves the um, store in, like, 12 days, right? Because, like, once Diabellstar leaves the store, they have to fucking hit it somehow. Because there's no way they're going to let Fire King Diabellstar run unhit. They generally might, Fire Kings generally might be in the next pack. I heard the Duel Links fucking maybe. Oh my god, oh my it's just fucking baffling. Like, wait, what the shit? And they just released the world's worst ban list as the uh Master releases the world's worst ban list as the return to the OCG. Yeah, it is Baron in Duel Links? Keep well keep in mind, like Bar Baron it's is is a singular good card, but Diabellosaur is like a good archetype and engine. Shit, they'd be even more powerful if, uh, uh, the in a 20 card deck. Well, I am happy that I got two, um, bonfires. It sucks that I can't, well, I mean, I do have Rescue Ace, Diabella Star. Why didn't they release the Rescue Ace support card in the, up in the pack? Fuck that. That makes me mad. Okay, someone outside is t clipping their fucking hedges or something. I was like, is that something in the fucking game? My god. Yeah, smelly woman meta. Uh, fucking hang on. That one handshake meme, Guilty Gear, Yu-Gi-Oh, smelly woman meta. Well, okay, we really aren't sure if ABBA is meta. She's too early for a character that complicated. Granted, I, I am glad they did release the new Unchained stuff. You gotta wait for the new, you gotta wait for the even newer you bell stuff to hit the game, but like, I should figure out how to actually play Unchained. Especially since it looks like it's going to go entirely unhit in Master Duel. Since it's a fucking UR and it's going to get overshadowed by whatever the fuck fires are doing. Yeah, I smell the game literally. The smell of a game, and it's apparently feet. It glows red and blows up. Cameras are on. Cameras are on. Hi, mortal. Oh, man. I just fucking can't believe Master Duel is in the state it's in right now. Like, what the shit is going on? There was- Oh, yeah, there was also some fucking Dark World support in the recent pack. That one Dark World Surge card, I'm like, this is the most random fucking thing. Why didn't you release it back when the um, Graph of Fusion came out? Hi. King waves hesitantly over in the, in the direction of the PA system. Anyways, the alpaca is right. We've got to fulfill his basic needs if we want to send them back to Earth in one piece. Like, chat, what, what, do, you, what, what do you think of Master Duel? What do you think of the whole nonsense that's going on there? 
Then you do then you do it if you're such an expert. I'm already on it. Kobo previously wanted to acquire mortal snacks without going through the hassle of traveling to the mortal plane. Yeah. Why the fuck did they even make bonfire? Those decks really didn't need that. So he requested that I build him a processor that could churn out things he wanted. I just need to make sure it's working right and check that it still has that bug whereby it explodes when coming in contact with water. Ugh. Right, and that means I need entertainment too. You're a prisoner. What do you need entertainment for? Well, Paco puffs his chest and tries to look intimidating. Steps closer to the large demon and pokes him in the chest. Oh, wow, this is solid. King retracts his hand and tries to start over. Well, I'll go crazy if I just remain stuck in a room with nothing to do. At least give me something to read. If we're doing good. We're talking about Master Duel. How are y'all doing? <laughs> Master Duel is in a fucking wild state, and I don't know why. Konami's off their fucking rocker. Fortis huffs, and, Fortis huffs and growls. Fine, then read this. Grabs a nearby jar of coffee powder and shoves it towards the alpaca snout. King slaps Fortis' his hands away. Hello, honey. Reading the label off a jar of coffee powder isn't stimulating. Ugh, what was I expecting? You mediates down here are the same as the ones on Earth. You're all, you're all, you're all only about the gains. Excuse me? I happen to be very well read. I'm not the second strongest demon general just by getting by on my strength alone. Number two? I flush number two down the toilet every morning, mister. Ooh, King of Forest looks sternly at the PA system. Sorry, carry on. Forest gives him an entire collection. We, I, I don't even know what that is. Jeez, he's fucking. Ooh. Kawu switch. Oh yeah. The new friend Vor. Forest's entire body is tense as a result. His heat body heat skyrockets, making that packet take a few steps back in order to keep his fleas from catching fire. Listen here, you're in no position to make demands. You're going to be a good little mortal and just sit back and take what I give you. That's what she said. They both leer at each other, neither budding on their stance. If you want to leave me being bored, leave me to be bored out of my brains, and I'll go on a hunger strike. Oh yeah? Well, this meathead has created chasms with these arms. I'm sure I can probably open that pretty mouth of yours and make you eat. Do it and I'll bite your finger. Uh, you can't hurt me. I just like it. Sound of crunching popcorn echoes through the room on the speaker from the speaker system. Amore! Oh, whoops, forgot I had my mic on. Front a uh, little Fortis turns back to the alpaca. Wispy steam emanates from Fortis as a sweat dripping down the demon's fist evaporates from his intense body heat. Gross. Oh man. Man, Master was so There's also the six million download campaign going on. That's nice. Takes a deep breath and his body temperature drops. Ugh. Closes his eyes for a while, then opens them again. Sports magazine okay for you? Okay, but I'm gonna need a box of tissues if you're gonna make me read. What? <laughs> or the inspirational sports story segments, you know, parts where they talk about how, how they go into, got, got into sports and all that. Right. Portis shakes his head and leaves to the portal. Oh boy, he's grumpy, huh? Oh. Uh, edgy stuff. Didn't two AR cards come out in Hasamo or something? <sighs> oh my god, Ab was the fucking mess in Strive. She ne okay. I th I think they. I don't know how they're gonna like give her just some anti zoning tool because my god, zoning is way too strong against her as it is right now. See, uh, he's, I see, I see, he's a penance, penance stare. Hey, have anyone, has anyone in chat read One Piece? King sighs loudly and places his hands on his hips. I'm sorry, Mari, what is it? Yup, yup. 
You sound like a nice demon. Can I have some privacy so I can rest? Oh, don't worry. These recordings are merely for research purposes. Come on, what if I needed to do some private things? I encourage that completely. Go for it. I want you to do whatever comes naturally to you. I'll smash you. I'll smash your bug. I welcome you to try, but it would, it would give me valuable data for the next model. While you do so, let me play some relaxing music to go with it. <laughs> yeah. I've used unique instead of We know, but she needs something so like a zoner can't literally time scam her. Not even zoners necessarily. Bridget can time scam her. It's not hard either. He just has to send her stupid little yo-yo out uh, into the like air and <laughs> Abba cannot catch up. Uh, no, she doesn't even build meter by just swinging the key at nothing. So she can't like swing the key at nothing then enter JR. Huh. I'll be there soon with the food machine. Have fun. Gentle music starts playing from the spider bot. King size defeated. He walks over to a nearby chair and sits down. Things would be easier without a camera watching him, but his time in the convenience store has long taught him how to avoid such surveillance. How do I steal the key from that walking bulldozer? Identity. Well, I don't get it. What do you mean Abba can't get in? What? What's the joke there? New song. I think. Yeah, okay, well, the website's weird and what the count as zoning and isn't zoning. Like, happy, like, happy Chaos and Asuka, and Asuka are both definitely zoners, but I don't think either of, the, either of them are listed as zoners. Uh, she does have an, uh, an approach tool, but it's just not that good. It's that slide that um uh it's that slide that low pro that um low profile stuff, but it just doesn't go far enough quick or quick enough to actually like catch up to like a zoner. If I recall, hang on, fucking, I mean, I'm looking them up real quick. The evening sun paints the sky a warm orange hue. Through peace, though the peaceful atmosphere would be welcoming for anyone. For anyone after a day after a hard work, you still have things to do. I heard she can do something. Yeah. Yeah, Abba's best tool right now is unironically a bug. Something that's definitely not intended. He just... Abba can block while dashing by holding back, down back, plus dash macro. And that's like her best, like, uh, anti-zoning tool. The fact that she can auto-block anything while running towards your opponent. Hmm. The shooter. Yeah, that's true. The only one with well, he's not even the only one with a gun. Elpeld has that too. Lucian leads you to the shopping district. At the entrance, he pulls out his halo and taps it twice on the top. A layer of static covers the halo, transforming it into a tablet. <sighs> Neat feature. What's with the dog ears on the protectors, though? I just thought they were cute. What? Angel turns his attention back to the device and walks on. You raise an eyebrow as Lucian starts and stops, walking sporadically. No, wait. Suddenly pivots and walks into a boutique. Lucian! Follow him inside, being led around the shop. Walks straight through a rack of dresses that you have hurriedly pull out his head, uh, head off, his, uh, pull off, pull off his head and is on his way back out the store. Lucian, where the heck are you going? I'm following the signal. Keep up! The pinging rises, the pinging rises and falls with no discernible pattern. The dog relentlessly follows its beck and call, leading him to yet another store. Let him enter on his own. Within five minutes, someone screams, followed by a loud slapping sound. He's gonna rush out of the store and briskly walks past you. Oh, covering his left cheek with his one hand, while the other hand keeps a steady grip on the halo, never taking his eyes off of it. What did he do? Almost something to himself for walking through a crowd, cutting off and bumping into so many crosses. Despite their exacerbated cries, walk behind him with your head held low. Sorry, sorry. Reaching out and seizing Lucian's wrist, you yank him to a hold. Dude, stop running around at random. You're bothering people. 
Yeah. But Strive feels different. But I like, honestly, honestly, I don't mind that characters feel different in Strive. Let's fuck it. I actually like my games to feel different from the from the last one. But honestly, part of my biggest re problem with like uh, fighting games is that they tend to feel so fucking saney. Like, I don't want to play more of the same game. If you're just if you're just going to give me more of the same, just keep updating that game. Like for all the flaws Universe 2 has with its endless DLCs, at least they just don't make a Xenoverse 3 that's the same fucking game. The Halo says the gate is somewhere near here. But you see a door moving around? It doesn't have to be a literal gate, just a name. That thing could be floating for all I know. There's clearly nothing here. Well, 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 but the Halo probably needs a good tap. Give it here. Grab the device and smack it against your thigh several times. Hey! Jun quickly grabs the item back. Stop that! It's time you treat God's gift. Dude, it's obviously not working. No, God doesn't make mistakes. Found you. It was working right before we got into this part of town. So let me figure out the pattern here. It is definitely here. I just need to know how it's moving. A bazillion different fighting games you can find new stuff in here, but yeah. Honestly, uh, honestly, part of my big, big reasons why I don't like uh, going from uh, don't like a uh, Zerd and um, Accent Core. It's just like, why they like the same fucking game? Ugh. I mean, I get, I get that there's like differences and combos and blah blah blah, but they just play too similarly. It's like, why would you play one and not the other? It's just the whole thing. You let out a long sigh. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm gonna search on my own. Don't go too far. Walks off, and you're stranded in the middle of the street. Pursing your lips, you rack your brain, wondering what to do next. Ugh. Ugh. Absolutely not. I'd rather just get a. I'd rather just play a new fighting game at that point. I don't want to play it. I don't want to pay sixty bucks for just the game I've already a game I've already bought but with less characters that I have to rebuy again. Honestly, I kind of don't like it when fighting games are too... Uh, even, I don't even like it when fighting games start, like, adding their old roster back as DLC. Give me a new fucking character or something, damn it. Like, honestly, I'm hoping... Like, honestly, I'm hoping the new final, DL, the final DLC of Season 3 isn't Slayer. I'm hoping it's just some fucking character we haven't heard of before at all. Just like, wait, who the fuck is this nigga? Dude, that'd be fucking so good. Just fucking blindsiding all of us. New character. That'd be great. That'd be great. Oh, you know, gross. Gross! Keep playing your old game if you want to play the same game. Where to start? Get that can break through the realm of the living without have taken up tons of soul energy. Not to mention the ritual would require would have required a lot of space. So want to find that, I can. Oh, what can I do? Jam's not out yet. I don't even we have no idea if Jam's even gonna be DLC. It's been season three. It's season three and she was data mine in season one. It's actually Robo Kai. I've got nothing. And suddenly tantalized by the urge to find a bench and take a break. Oh, stop being such a me and think. Can you help? What would he do in this situation? Probably ask around, yeah? Probably somebody who looks like they know a lot too. Someone must have seen some kind of some seen some of that construction work. And someone would be here most of the time. Looking around, your gaze falls upon a lonely street side vendor. Half of a roasted chicken hangs found the food display case as though proudly announcing to the world. Look at how good my food is. Get it while it lasts. It's the only store still open. The rest are either closed for the day or were never in business to begin with. Ugh. Am I getting lightheaded, chat? I ate like four slices of pizza before stream, so I'm not hungry. Ugh. I'm having a rough one, chat. I don't know why. Considering you have nothing to lose, you, know, you head over to the chicken rice chicken rice stall in question. I've drunk water, like enough to the point that I'm kind of kind of like, okay, maybe I should drink less because I'm feeling a bit funny. Slender so man wearing an apron stained with brown sauce stains up from the heat. Seat smiles warmly at you, Slender Man. 
Actually, I think he's kind of twonkish. Hi there, want some chicken rice? Got some juicy roasted chicken. I'll take two, both boobs. Let's go eat some chicken boobies. Oh, speaking of boobs, the reason I asked if y'all have read One Piece is because like, y'all know how Robin can make like body parts bloom and stuff, right? Do you think she could just make like breasts grow, grow out the ground, boobs and stuff? Just like fucking, I, I feel like she could because she's made like, whole like double like a whole nother body and stuff so logically she can create like everything on the human body like she can like can clone herself so she, she can totally she totally should be able to make like boobs and stuff grow out the ground got some roasted pork for another three dollars he pulls up a slip slab of crispy pork from a compartment behind his stall there's not much left but the bright orange crust from roasting the pork skin spurs your appetite mm, just the chicken is five dollars already i think no and her nods and starts preparing the dish um, business looks good. Of course, my chicken rice is the best in town. I've been selling it for a decade. Trust me, try elsewhere. All you like, all you like, all you love mine so much, we'll be back in no time. What time do you usually start selling? I'm here from breakfast to dusk. Hey, they must have seen a buttload of interesting things going on around here. My friend and I are actually looking into supernatural spots in the town. Are you one of them too, people? Not really, my friend just likes to hear about mysteries and creepy stuff. Why don't you take take on oh, take them to the Kibbleton Old Hotel, but Old Kibbleton Hotel by Hillside. People are disappearing all disappearing all the time over there. Yeah, we'll check that out later. But what about here? Come on, you must know something interesting about this part of town. Maybe or maybe not. I've got a lot of chicken and pork to sell. Perhaps if I had less on my plate, I could recall better. Fair enough. So I start towards the pork and back at you. On your eyes, you pull out your wallet. You know what? I think I will take the roasted pork with my chicken. Two servings of roasted pork come right up. So, do you see that street over there? He points down the road to his left, leading beyond several, ro several rows of closed on shops. Yeah, what about it? It's Dober Walk number one. I want Dober Walk number two. All the businesses that used to be on Dober Walk one either moved here or closed on permanently. So it's bad business location? Yeah, probably some shitty feng shui. Some rumors that all the bad business out there start with the death of the arcade owner who owed, all owed money to the local gang. Uh oh, spoopy music! Spoopy music! Since then, those two who walk the those who walk the streets sometimes hear a painful scream come from the arcade, or a sickeningly overpowering feeling of being watched by hundreds of eyes. What? I've never heard of that one. It's bad for business to talk about it. People who know someone was murdered instinctively wonder if they'll be next. That's the main reason we all shift out our premises here. Start clean. How real exactly are those rumors? Personally, I believe it. I walked that street a while back, and I swear I heard my... The intro's off. You're curious, but you decide not to press it. His hand trembles as he closes the lid on his packed food. He fumbles the plastic forks and spoons as he bundles it and your takeaway together with a rubber band. He hands you the food in a bright purple plastic bag. You hand him the money in return. Paying for the meal, you store it inside your backpack. The vendor thanks you for your patronage and begins to close the stall. I wonder about the new information as you walk over to find the stray angel. Lucian! Hmm? What is it, Kobu? Well, any luck? No, oh, that's not good. Sounds like your work needs a backup generator. Where to pay the electricity bill? Why, oh, yes, I managed to decipher the movement of the gate. Look, Lucian shows you the tracking tool. Radar display shows a dot moving across the screen before bumping on the edge of the display and moving in a perpendicular direction. Are you showing me your screensaver? I know what it looks like, but I'm confident that we can catch the gate if we find the boundaries that cause the gate to bounce around. Or we can check out this lead I got instead. What lead? This chicken rice vendor I talked to mentioned the former arcade where someone died. Since then, no one goes to that area. Sounds like the perfect place to build a gate. Lucian taps his mouth with a forefinger. Gaze in the far direction of the street you mentioned, then back to his tablet. No, no, we need to stick to this. This is, Lord's Gary's, this is Lord Gary's plan, and he knows what's best. Come on, we're wasting daylight chasing a screensaver. Lord Gary is never wrong. He made the perfect device for the task already. I'm going with or without. Well, I'm going with or without you then. Take several steps in the direction of a haunted street before turning back to face Lucian. Here I go, all alone. If this is real, and I die. It's on you. Fine, I'm coming. That's what she said. There's so many great jokes we had in this visual novel chat. Oh my god. 
streets of Doberwalk 1 bear the scars of a place long forgotten. What a great line. She has been talking a lot this stream. Thank you for noticing, Choron. Weeds have taken root in the cracked walkways. The road is now a milky grade. No one has bothered to retard it. Lucian, though by your side, would keep darting his head back to where you both came from. Would you relax? I'm wrong about this. We can go chase that bouncing gate or whatever. There's no guarantee we'll still be here. The gate can move. Anything is possible. There's a handful getting this far. Down to surface and you persist on forward until you reach the arcade. A two-story structure with strips of white paint that has peeled off where time dangles delicately. They shiver against the gentle breeze. The metal rafters have been pulled up, pulled down on the, in, on the main entrance. A splattered, smear of red paint lies faded upon the metal surface. What happened to this place? What's with the slapdash pin job? It's not a pin job, it's a warning a gang the warning gangs use. Else red paint on someone's property is a sign that I need to pay up or else. What a disgusting mortal custom. Just how it's done. You borrow money from the wrong people, there's there's a price to pay. Money. The greed of mortals sits wrongly with me. You know, it's not like um I've been to an arcade a few times, but not, not in a fucking while. Is that your whole beef with their kind? They love money too much. It's one of them it's one more it's one on a very long list. Like you don't know what it's like having to attend their every need in heaven. Despite your judgment in the underworld, the souls up there attain much of their personalities. That shows in their fantasies they ask Lord Gary to draw up. I just hate seeing Lord Gary work himself to the bone for them, when in life they'd rather give up their soul to money. Cheer up, not everyone's like that. Your optimism, much like this plan, is not very inspiring. There's still no sign of the gate. Listen, chat, I need to go refill my fucking water bottles. What should y'all discuss? I can get my voice a rest, to be honest. Really? Y'all have got no ideas? Nope, not discussing that. Solus Robo, Solus Robo. I actually saw some Solus Robo fan art earlier of Red, a headshot. I know. Discuss uh, when you think Fuga 3 will come out. Yeah, there. That's your topic since we're talking about Sold to Robo and all that.
I'm back, chat. Ay, ay, ay. I nearly forgot to log into Dislike today. Whoa. Shh, listen. There goes the music. Shut up, phone. Your ears perk up to the sound of a muffled scream. Oh, no. Did you hear that? Lucian raises his ears and looks about. His eyes widen. Oh, no. It's faint. Almost ghost-like. I just need to get this shit done for today. It's coming from inside the arcade. Arcade. Help me find a way in. Check the circle. Yeah. You circle the side of the arcade and find a side door with a lone window covered in yellow newspapers. Why newspapers? Drop the door handle and give it a good twist, but it won't open. Lucian, bonk it down or throw a feather at the lock or something. I don't know, man. You have magic. It's going to be toast. Damn, it's locked. You wouldn't happen to know how to pick a lock, would you? Lucian shakes his head. Well, how do you propose we go in? Look! Let me help! Both of you scream at the top of your lungs. Lucian grabs you by your arm and kicks the door where Toast head popped out of. Lucian grabs you by your arm and kicks the door where Toast head popped out of. The lock breaks with a loud crack and the door swings open. Jeez, are you trying to fucking kill the man? Lock breaks the loud crack and the door swings open. Dude! It's not my fault. He scared me. It's not my fault. He scared me. As a book, but his kit revolves around light and dark person. Shield damage or damage on order. You can make your shield. What was that? Oh, Warframe. Boom, boom, boom. It's not my fault. He scared me. Toast snorts with laughter. Oh my god, I was going off to unlock it from inside, but that was way more fun. Lucian, you throw dirty looks at the ghost. The angel lets, lets go of you and you instantly pull out and, and instantly pulls out a feather. Let me kill him. No, don't! Toast, you better have a good explanation of why, for why you're here. Not much to explain. I was looking for you, but I saw her hanging around with... Wins at Lucian without really acknowledging him. So I figured he was going to give you a hard time. It'd be better if I stuck around, stuck around to, bail, to bail you out if he, if, he, if he got you in trouble. Me? Hello? I do not get into trouble. Sure you don't. Toast, we're doing something important here. Don't want to get involved unless you want to go back to the underworld. What? If you're doing something dangerous, then you're going to need me. I, I need to give him an actual voice, but fuck it, whatever, this isn't good enough. Probably gonna stab him with a feather, I don't know, just fucking... Shoink. Shoink. I, I, that, I, that's the noise I assume feathers make. Shoink. Portal to the sun. Ghost. Yeah. Ghosts can open portals to the sun, don't you know? Have you never been a ghost before, chat? You just don't know. You don't. You uh, that just sounds weird to you because you don't hang out with the ghost enough. Hello, Oxfy. We're playing more. Where the demon lurks. Took me a second. Toast. Come on. You two don't look like you know a thing about breaking in. At least let me be the lookout. I don't trust him. Your hunch tells you to place some trust in him. Despite being a condemned soul, Hyena doesn't hasn't done anything suspicious after how he went, after how he went intentionally helped him out back there. 
We don't have time to debate this. His idea isn't that bad. Let's just let him keep an eye out for us. Fine, but I'm keeping an eye on you, Ghost. Name's Toast. Why is his name Toast? <laughs> Beaming that well, well, okay. Oops, up to the roof. We better work fast. You immediately spot numerous footprints on the dusty floor when entering. You give your eyes some time to adjust to the dark. The only light is on the doorway you entered from. It's rapidly fading as dusk approaches. Just have just have him bring up the halo. It should be able to have a, it should be able to make some light. I bet it has a flashlight function. You take out your phone and turn on the flashlight. Oh. Why? What do you mean? What's dimmed? Oh, because the light's off. That's why. Soft thud followed by a click of a tongue alert you. Turn your flashlight to the source, but all you find is illusion rubbing your snout. This place is filthy. Your arcade had seen better days. Thick layer dust coats almost everything. Numerous arcade counts are fucking damn it. Lo lined up in an aisle full of twists and turns like a maze. Hang on, I have to my glasses. I can't see shit. It's like the fucking health bar thingy from whatchamacallit. Persona 3. Yeah, you missed toast, Doze. Toast the ghost. Spooky music. The arcade had seen better days. A thick layer of dusk. I have numerous arcade games lined up with to it like a maze. Blows out the halo again, but it does not make a sound. Hmm. He raises an eyebrow at you, but you just wave him off. The footprints lead behind the counter. Let's see what we let's see what we can find. You both approach the counter. Ugh. It is too blanketed in dust. You both approach the counter. It, is too, it, it too is blanketed in dust. Behind that, there's a cabinet with many compartments guiding cobwebs. You imagine there's a. Ca imagine it used to be filled with prizes to be won. Yo, that's sick. Above the cabinet is a little notice board filled with e past years of gaming tournament ads. Oh, that's sick. Ed. Without hesitation, he crouched beneath the table looking for some sign of a gate, button, a switch, or anything. Yeah, Halo's probably an acronym for something funny. Jeez, nothing down here. Help me search the cabinet. You and Lucian have the cabinet out. Leave the cat out. Heave the cabinet away from the wall, but find nothing behind or below it. Scratch your mane. Nothing. Damn it. Lucian pushes the cabinet back into position before walking over to the notice board. Alright, let's get out of here. Lucian? Hold on. Oh no. Dog stares at the notice board. Did you see something? His nose twitches as he leans towards it. I smell a spell. You sniff the air, but can't catch a whiff of anything. I guess you do have the better nose. Thought taking down the board, he sets it on top of the counter. There's a spell here somewhere. Help me look. Okay. Hmm. Air guitar competition. Anime cosplay competition. Just a bunch of posters. No, I can feel it. They're hiding the incantation somewhere. What fucking incantation? You speaking witch? Stop speaking witch. If I wanted to hide a spell, I don't think I would hide it in plain sight. All right, let me just. Conjures a feather and waves it around in the posters. Things from the printed text begins to liquefy and slither towards one another. 
Once Kinjiu and Gooey tend to start to merge and link up with, an, with, with, their, late, with their neighbors, the Gooey Black turn to its form and connect and form a magic circle. Whoa, those mar these markings. I've never seen them before. What do we do now? Fucking get out to get the heck out of there. Some fuck he's going on chat. Maybe. Picks up the board and puts it back where it was hung. Like a key sliding into the lock, a chime rings out from the magic circle. One white cracks forms across the entire wall and the shelf in front of it. Shatters and place space to replace the rows of yellowed bones and skulls arranged in the shape of a gate. This is it. Lucian pulls out his device, announces the cool robotic tone. You have arrived at your searched item. Oh yo, we did it! Yeah! This is it. This is it. Where did they get all these bones from? They're too big to be animal bones. They're just big animals. Like, uh, elephants. It doesn't matter. Let's open it. Angel pushes against the gate, but it does not budge. It's locked. There are three keyholes here. Darn it. Should have known it wouldn't be that easy. Guys! Toast? I saw two dudes coming over here. Hurry! Shit, turn the circle off! Lucian waves a feather over the board, the magic circle undoes itself, the gate reverting back into an ordinary wall. Inside, you hear footsteps approaching. Frantically, you wave to Lucian and Toast to get down. The ghost floats over and th the ghost floats over, and three of you hide behind the corner. Your word, you share word glances at one another, and Lucian puts a finger to his lips. What the hell happened here? Shit, man, we shouldn't have gone for that cup of coffee. How was I supposed to know someone was going to try and break in today? I think it would have. I think it could have just been a bunch of a bunch of teens like the other night. How would I know? I wasn't there. Do you have to report this to someone? Yeah, their footsteps entering the premises. No, let's just check this place to be sure, then fix the door. Last time those dumb teens are smoking behind the arcade cabinets. Why? We need to get out of here. Lucian taps you on the shoulder to get your attention. Points to himself, then to the door, then you, and gestures to run. You understand that he aims to be a distraction. Hey, you smell that? It's most like a soul. Two of you swing your head towards Toast, but just as but he's just as dumbfounded as you are. Man, that's all you think about. We just got paid last week. Can you blame me? We don't get enough. Damn right about that. The side's clear. Check the counter. Toast whispers to you both. I'll distract them. You guys run. No, let me. I can do it with my feathers. Given a sliver of time to decide, Toast's son volunteering throws you off, but he has a determined look in his eyes. He's been reliable so far, but one of those goons said they could smell a soul. A normal person wouldn't be able to do that. Case falls solution. How does plan would be the safest, but if he fails, King is as good as dead. At least we have you have the least lose here. Perhaps you're the best option. Oh no, spoopy, 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 chat! Oh, wait, fuck, I'm dumb. That's not the right button. I definitely forgot the protagonist's name. It's Kubo, right? Toast. Kobu! Okay, that's close. Uh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, there's also the Bleach guy, but I was honestly, I was thinking of like Kubo and the two strings, that movie. Jeez, why does fucking everyone hate Toast? What did he do to y'all? God. See who gets to fucking be the bait. 
the distraction. Okay, that's in the game. Okay, that's fucking beeping. God, fine. Toast and Jesus. You better have a plan. Just leave, just leave after I lead them. Let's so float out the middle, plow out to the middle of the room. Hey, knuckleheads! What? Did you fucking look at him? It's a ghost! I knew it! After it! Toast floats out the building while the goons give chase. You peek from the corner of the table. Once you're sure the coast is clear, you and Lucian slip out the door and carefully run the direction to your apartment. I think we're in the clear. Apartment is in sight, merely a five minute walk away. Stop to catch your breath. Lucian, on the other hand, keeps a close watch of your surroundings. You okay? I'm fine, now keep walking. We're not safe until we're in your apartment. We'll continue heading towards your place. I hope Toast will be safe. Perhaps. Well, he has avoided capture by my hands. I think he can view to ret I think he can avoid a few regular hooligans. There's nothing regular about those guys. Remember what they said? Yes, they were able to detect souls. Technically, demons and angels feel off soul energy too. Could they be one of us? No, I doubt it. The magic used to hide the gate didn't incorporate any markings of our kind. That's spoopy. Both reach the apartment entrance and climb the steps. Well, did you see who they were? I didn't. I was too busy trying to think of a way to get us to safety. You think we can get the, get back to the gate later? Yes? No? Maybe? I don't know. He speaks at a louder volume than he usually does. Stomach twists at the thought that you've upset him somehow. Hey, did I do something wrong? No, please. I just need time to think. Arrive at the front of your unit door. I'll stay and watch in case of any trouble. What about dinner? I got your portion too. Well, the takeaway containers from your bag. That's nice. You can have it. I'm not in the mood. This guy. The spooky, scary, evil cult people. Maybe they have something to do with whatever talked to Vendor Vendrake at the beginning, you know? Turned his eyes gray. However, you keep your thoughts to yourself and enter your home. When with your back pressed against the door, you slowly slide down before curling up on the- Oh, is that why? None of the souls go to the underworld or anything? Because they all belong to fucking whatever the cult is doing? The neutral. The nooch. With your, when you, with your back pressed up against the door, you slowly slide down before curling up on the floor. Today was just too much. Is that how he's feeling out there? Thoughts about Lucian follow you as you crawl into the shower. At least he's bathing himself. You reheat and set down the chicken and rice on the table before digging in. You have a spoonful in and you notice that Lucian's share remains untouched. It's already starting to go get cold. You have a scoop of rice on your spoon, but you lack any motivation to eat. All I can think about is how Lucian is feeling. You can't eat like this. Cold wind blows gently against your fur. Lucian stands at the same spot you last saw him. You open your mouth, but no words come out. Maybe this isn't my place to say anything. You know what? Fuck it. Lucian. Please come in and have some dinner. Zed dips a little. You walk over and stand beside him on the railing. Looks ahead at the clouds. I told you, I'm not hungry. A loud growl emanates from his stomach. Come on, don't do this. This is what I deserve for screwing up today, okay? I don't understand. I thought we made it out alright. Barely, today was just... Could have... No, should have done more. Maybe, but I'm not sure you'd be, even be home at that point. Maybe Kobu would flee with the toast. 
And we'd have the two of them chilling at home. If I just figured out the halo was being tricked faster, we could have gotten more time with the gate. We have your halo now. We can still find the keys. It's useless. I didn't scan the keyholes. They probably tightened security by now, so we can't go back again. Can't waste time doubting myself any longer. I need to get back there. No, we don't know who those people are or what they can do. They made a freaking gate using bones. And what? Without information on those keyholes, where's good as stuck? I'm so stupid. I shouldn't have taken those ones tools out and interrogated them. Girl his own fur, practically pulling it out. Don't do that. Which could have gotten you or both of us hurt. It doesn't matter if I get hurt, the mission comes first. Slams his arm onto the railing. Come on, everyone messes up once in a while. I wouldn't even notice if you didn't bring it up. No, I can't mess up. Not angels. Especially those that are worth anything to God. Lucian gets fucking unsettled and angry. Lucian's words draw you to his eyes, your image reflected upon their surface. I... I know how much it hurts to make a mistake. Heck, isn't that why you're here? Because I made so many already? It sucks that you suck, and there's no guarantee you won't fuck up again. Nice, Persona 4 Gold and... My friend uh, and his boyfriend are playing Persona 4 Gelordin on Switch. Gelordin Frieza. I'm sorry I did that, Chad. I just I just felt the instinct because I was saying golden so much. It sucks that you suck. Heck, maybe you'll fuck up even more until you want to quit. Until you want to just quit your job and be left alone. What I'm getting at is, we're all going to fuck up. At least we can be a fuck ups together, get something to eat, and figure this out. Lucian sniffles and looks away from you. That's on a shirt before looking back at you. That was a below average pep talk, but thank you for trying. You smile, and your arm feels more at ease. Yay! Gay boy. Is that the gay boy part? Well deserved edition. What do you mean, well deserved? <laughs> like, you know what? Fuck you. Both of you, you know what? Fuck all y'all. Y'all all deserve some eternal punishment. Come on, I'm not saying it a third time. Let's eat. If you insist. There he is! Toast holding up above, losing the plate with a piece of roasted pork in his translucent hand. Ah, oh, you guys done already? You! You're back! Toast drops the food and floats up over to you both. Hey, did you guys miss me? I'll miss the moments of silence we got with your absence. No, he's not alive, he dead. Just read his shirt. Are you sure you weren't followed? Are you sure you weren't followed? Of course I'm sure. Didn't take long for those dudes to get up the chase. They're more preoccupied with fixing the door. From what I overheard, they're going to cover up the break-in to save their own asses. But they'll be keeping a closer eye than before. I knew it. <sighs> Look, let's, let's put a pause on all this and just finish dinner. Now everyone, sit. Three of you gather around the short dinner at the short around the short dinner ta dinner table for a table for dinner table for the meal. Can I have that roasted pork? You may not. Can I have yours, partner? Uh, I mean, I was uh okay. Maybe just one. Sweet. Takes one and puts it inside his mouth. Watch the pork go down. Be what appears to be an invisible esophagus before it drops out of midway and lands on the floor. Those sizes you pick up the meat. Damn it! I just want to eat something. A waste of time. Your kind can't take in, take in anything physical without a body. Yet you retain your living need for food, for sex, and for drinks. At least that's what the other world, other world or manual told me. Isn't that right, Kobu? Um, no, yeah, I remember that. You're too preoccupied with your meal to really pay attention. I need to ask you about those hooligans you evaded, Toast. Did you get a good look at them? What do they look like? Do they wear anything distinctive? Couldn't tell you, pretty boy. Didn't really get a good look at them, but from what I did see, they just looked like any other guy on the street. Lucian clutches his utensils tightly. Hey, if you guys need me, I could go spy on them. I watched tons of spy films before. 
I doubt that'll help if they can smell you. Besides, don't you have something better to do now that you've escaped the underworld and all? Being retrained is a typo, I think. What? I don't know. What do you mean retrain? Oh, we're on. Oh yeah, well, Brown's honestly, I remember using him in the SMT4. He's good for like a demon that resists Fizz. Him and um, fucking, I don't want to say Fairy or something, not Fairy. Spriggan are two good early game demons that resist Fizz. Wait, shit, I have an appointment with Archon. Archon, look, they forgot the time. All right, catch you guys later. Toast. Too late, he flies out the ceiling. We're going to be seeing a lot more of him, aren't we? I think so. Lucian sighs and focuses back on his meal. And two hours left in stream chat. Hey, I'm doing a stakeout tonight, right? You don't have to. That is my duty. No way, that's not fair. I already stayed up all of last night. It's my duty to keep you safe until you get back to your throne. I'm not risking it. Well, I, for one, love my sleep, and I'm pretty confident you need some too. Especially after the day we've, especially after the day we've had. How about it? We, uh, patrol inside the apartment tonight. That defeats the whole purpose. Hear me out. You get the sofa, I'll be near you. Anything happens, we're close to the door, you get rest, and I'll be on alert. You can take the spoonful of chicken and rice and choose on it. You're not going to stop asking me to sleep until I do it, will you? Nope. Fine. I'll humor you. Great. Then let's shout down and get ready to hit the hay. Re oh! Retrained his mortal designers. Oh, uh, oopsies. Both finish up your you both finish up your dinner before getting dressed for sleep. Luckily, you have an extra blanket and pillow lying around for Lucian to use on the sofa. The first few minutes, you lie in silence, tapping your belly. Yeah, they have nipples. You have a feeling that Lucian isn't asleep either, but you can't really see anything from the lower angle. Lucian. Lucian sits up towards you. Mm hmm. How's the sofa? Comfy? It's adequate. Cool. You are uh, not taking your jewelry off when you before you sleep. And you know, touches the piece of gold that circles his neck. This is more. There's more. This is more magic. This is more magic than a piece of jewelry. So my vow as an angel to serve God and prove that it proof that we receive God's blessing. So I can't really take it off that easily. Besides, I'm good one makes me feel comfortable too. The kiwi undies, kiwi boxers. Huh. Every angel has that? Yeah, so we're all gifted one upon creation. You can liken it to confirmation or initiation. What do you give your underlings? I think they get a cumberland of pen and a company t-shirt that says Team Demos. Demos? A typo. Printed way too many and haven't fixed it since my dad was in office. Interesting. Says the angel who certainly traveled all the way to Earth to learn fun facts about the demon world. Yeah, those are uh, kiwis. Though I like how they're also split into kiwis. Hey, about the gate. Did you think of something? What if we ask Morris for some help? What? It's dangerous to involve any anyone else in this. Besides, what makes you think he would be willing to help? Since then he finds out you're a demon, if he won't destroy you, he'll exercise he'll exercise you or worse, turn you into a summon. I know. That's why we don't tell him everything. You want to deceive him into helping us? That's despicable. Not deception, we're just, you know, taking create talk taking creative liberties with the truth. Lucian lies back down. You can hear him turn on the sofa. Won't have any part of this. How many more mortals do you need to get dragged into all do you, do you want to get dragged along with this on this problem? Well, do you have a better idea? Exactly. I don't like it as much as you do, but we're obviously stuck. And he might not even know about who would be on who would be behind all this. Yeah, kiwis are cool. They're flightless birds with no survival instinct, or well, at least no aversion to humans. They just kind of chill out. We have to involve them. He has every right to know what's going on. Lying by omission is st lying by omission is still lying. My goodness, I just know this is going to affect my promotion. It's going to be another hundred years before I get another chance at it. Drama queen alert. Relax. I think Gary is pretty understanding. Even if you don't didn't get the promotion, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? I've been working my whole life for this. I want to be one of Lord Gary's top angels. 
just a job, man. Don't stress yourself about it. Easy for you to say. You're at the top of your company. There's nowhere else left to go. When did when did being the demon lord just become a job for you? Since the start? Since always. I was smart enough not to let the job consume me. Did it though? Did it ever did it even did it ever come close to consuming you? Damn, last time Mark felt like a dirty blow. I'm sorry. That was uncalled for. Oh, it's fine. Just I just don't like remembering that part of my life. So you being sent here had some something to do with your job. Fingers dig deeper into the mattress. They strain your eyes that just strain in your eyes that you try to hold back. We maybe not talk about that for now. Okay. Not will snickle sniffle echoes off the walls. I just realized we weren't, weren't completely off topic. What were we talking about? Oh Morris. Well we want to ask him to ask him to help us find the keys to open the underworld gate. I'll admit, you're right. Don't have any other uh, uh, any other alternatives for now. I'll follow your lead. Guess we can meet him tomorrow after my shift. I'll be around. Night, Lucian. Mm. In the morning, you wake in first. Lucian is so deep asleep, say so leave him be. You write down a note that you're going to work and remind him not to go near the gate on his own. As a prank, you stick the note over his right nipple. Let me just smile to your face, seeing him snore. Sniffle note. It's stuck working for the rest of the day. To your horror, a promo sale is on today. Popular children's video game that involves catching cute mascot characters collaborating with a hot dog company. Pokemon hot dogs! For every three hot dogs bought, a customer gets a sticker. Collect 10, they can exchange it for a random package that may or may not contain a rare figurine. Wish you could open them all and take the prize for yourself, but that would be against the rules. And the only thing onslaught of customers drains your energy dry. The end of your shifts couldn't come any sooner. Stepping out of the store, Lucian is already. Why don't y'all wear shoes? Hey, been waiting long? Not much. I just got here. From where? Honestly, I slept the day away. He sighs and shakes his head. Cute note, by the way. Hey, let's go. Let's go before Morris closes up. Lead the way. Yeah. Do you head to the shopping district where Morris' office is located? Oh boy. Chat, I don't know why I'm feeling the burn as intensely as I am. Like, goddamn. I got sleep and everything. Oh, jeez. I even. Oh, now I'm kind of hungry again. Granted, that pizza was the only thing I've eaten all day, like quite literally all day, and I don't. It's bugging me. It's bugging me. As you walk, you conjure up excuses to pull if Morris gets a suspicion of you and your partner's identity. Identity. Lucian remains silent as he walks beside you, his face fixed in the same bored expression he maintains all the time. Sneak glances at him, and he looks off at the surroundings with glazed eyes. I really could have handled last night better. Why is he making such a big deal out of this? Heck, why am I bothered by what he thinks? You begin to focus on the pavement beneath your feet by leaping from one thought to another. Slowly before you know it, a memory from the past begins to swell up within your mind. Today, from when you just started taking your role as the former ruler of the underworld, Fenric was there. Fenric, I have a question. Yes, my lord? Did anyone ever try to find out why these souls keep trying to escape? There's no mystery to that. Though, though, those embers hate to be th those embers hate to be tortured, which brings up the question: Why do we even torture them in the first place? Their soul energy output barely reaches what above makes with their method. Hmm. Apparently, their souls, you mean? What challenges they're in granting all their wishes? What we demons do is far more complicated. It's artistic, even. Just don't see the point. We need soul energy to build the underworld, to pay our employees, and keep the world ba in balance. So why aren't we switching to a more productive method? Vendrick smiles at you, a rare occurrence that, a rare a rare occurrence than a day where in a day where he hasn't when rare than a day where he wasn't telling you off or something. You think just like your father, always about the end results. I haven't seen the bigger picture the me I haven't seen the bigger picture the meaning the torture in, the meaning that torture inspires. These souls, whether they victim of circumstance or by their own free will, made choices that brought about their suffering that brought about suffering to those around them. When suffering the suffering they go through now is a reflection of the anguish they placed on others before. Analog horror. Just fucking VHS tapes. 
as much as they despise it, they must suffer, for they are to be an example for all, for, to all mortals' life, to push them towards living an honorable life. Sometimes the end goal is meaningless, so the method used to achieve it ruins whatever, val whatever value the goal had in the first place. Kobu! Linking, Lucien Zayel pushed pulls you out of your own thoughts. Turn around in an unfamiliar alleyway, alleyway to meet Lucien's vexed expression. Makes you feel like a sheep who strayed too far from their flock. Watch where you're going. You nearly walked into a wall. Oh, sorry. Lucian walks ahead. He left pondering. I wonder, is this the same thing? Ah, shut up, Ryan. Stop down yourself. We need his help. Screw the truth. Screw the truth. I've got money. Approaching the office, you see the flight of stairs on the side of the building leading to the second floor. Right above the entrance to the stairs is a sign that reads, Morris Boris, Exorcism, Exorcism Extraordinaire. You, you and Lucian exchange some nods as you make your way up. Had Hancho die? What do you mean? Do the underlings get eternal life? I thought they were just very long lived. Actually, well, yeah, no, you're right. Vindrake has served ever since the first Demon Lord, so he's immortal while he's immortal. While we know, um, Kobu's dad has died. Morris sits behind a worn out looking desk, tinkering with his watch. Give me a minute, I'm just working on recharging this watch, and no, it's not working. Morris looks up at you. Oh, hey, it's you two. Take a seat. I got coffee or tea if you'd like. Neither, please. I need your help. Come on, brew a main cup of joe. What about you? Turns his attention to Lucian. I want to say Lucy. It's a Lucian, and no, I'm not thirsty. And then it's down and then it's down to business and then it's down to business. You guys came at a great time. Morris takes out a briefcase and shows you its contents. What do you need? I've got charms for ghosts and all kinds of fierce salts for your curse removal needs. Take a deep breath to steady your nerves. I need help with saving King. He was kidnapped by a demon that attacked the store. Well, I don't hear that every day. Nurse expected King would become someone to mess around with demons though. He looked so timid. No, it wasn't his fault. He took a demon's attack that was meant for me. Now the boss of these demons are sending more of them after more of them after me. You? Why are demons going after you? I start over to Lucian, dangerous leaning back, watching in stone cold silence. Because you look at the table. Because in college I was in a super golf phase and I accidentally summoned a demon, and uh, you know, I wish for something I didn't honor. Wish for something, didn't honor the bargain. I've been on the run ever since. Morris and Lucian's jaw drops. This is a joke, right? And the two are trying to pull a prank or something. Morris raises an eyebrow at Lucian, but the angel just shrugs it off. Oh, the current king dies and gets reborn as the king from Tekken. Hang on, chat. I usually leave my window open to get light, but once it gets dark out, I turn on my lamp, but I fucking always have to fuck with the uh, uh, curtains. Okay, then what did you sacrifice to summon the demon? Oh, uh, crap, I can't remember. Can't quite remember. I think it was a hamster from a store? What? You describing a demon capable of ordering other demons to go after you. That is at least a general class demon. You would have needed to sacrifice a person to get them to even speak to you on this plane of existence. Fuck. And Chimble, your heartbeat is climbing as you search for ways to explain yourself out of this. Morris points at the dog. And this has been bothering me with most. What is his role in all this? I'm sure Kobu can explain for me. Can't you, Kobu? He smiles mischievously at you. <laughs> he just wants to see how deep into the lies you can dig yourself. He is a holy person from the same city I hailed from. And where is that? Um, um, now he's got around for a clue. Penetration? Did you just say penetration? <laughs> Sorry, but this is getting too convoluted for me. I don't have time to waste on a prank. No, wait. Raise your hands to get him not to close the discussion so soon. Ah, <laughs> oh, fine. I don't have a choice. This is the truth. Formerly. Formerly? Formerly. I was a demon lord of the underworld, then a few years back, I was kicked out by one of my generals, and I've been on the run. Ever and I've been on the run since. King was kidnapped, I won't lie about that. That's why I need your help to find out how to open the underworld gate here. 
Going up against demons that will show up at any time to kill me, I have no way to stop them. Lucian sits up upright. Eh, this part, I can vouch on my authority as an angel. An angel? Yes, I was sent by God to get Kobo back to the underworld and assume his rightful place as demon lord. Oh, you got an ad. Hilarious, chat. Hilarious. What was the ad about? Tell me it was a Tekken ad. I know Eddie... Eddie Goro? Gordo? I don't know. Eddie Goro got fucking dropped in Tekken. What was Dogma 2? So what's Joe? What was the, the ad? Uh. You can't expect me to believe I have a demon and an angel working together in front of me. Lucian leans forward and conjures a feather in his hand. Need trick? I need trick. I can pull cards out of a deck, too. With a snap of his finger, the feather floats in midair, shoots the wall behind the boar, bearing itself like a knife before dissipating away. More stares at the feather, then back at you both, then back at the feather several times. Hell no, never in a million years. I'm not helping a demon. Please, this could affect not only our two companies, but the state of your world. I don't care. By the sound of it, you already know what to do. Just find anyone else but me to do it. Morris, please. I'm sorry, but I've made my decision. No, please. I've got extra some materials to buy, and it's closing time. Oh, no. Feels like all the air in your lungs is sucked out. You're seeing your lifeless body limp as you leave the office. Oh, man. Losing his thinly seen hurries along. When you both reach the front of the foot of the stairs, he grabs you by the wrist and pulls you into a nearby alley. What are you? Pin you against the wall. Oh, top it on. Hands pressed by your head, forcing you to look right at him. He smirks at you. What? what? Looks like your plan fell apart. Looks like your plan fell apart. Hey, being honest. Hey, being honest didn't help either. I know. Just enjoy rubbing it in your cute face either way. Boops you on the nose. Now shh. He's out of the corner, then back at you. we will start moving anytime soon. We'll follow him. What? Why? He already said he won't help us. We're done. You're supposed pragmatist. You give up so easily. Yeah, well, you're naive and, and you're too cocky. Thank you. Now focus. <laughs> Racist bull. Yeah. He's on the move. Let's give him some distance before we follow. Again, why? He might not be willing to help us. Oh, fuck. He might not be willing to help us, but he did say he's restocking exorcism materials. Odds are, we can at least meet someone who knows other exorcists. That's a gamble. Better than going home empty handed. Sunraku? I don't get it. I don't know what that means. Oh no, people are talking about Tekken 8 DLC. Not all the pricing and executives and stuff like that. That's not good. On that, I, on that, I agree. Random 7-Eleven stuff. Buy them from Reagan from Mob Psycho 100. Once Lucian's certain that Morris is far enough away, you tail him carefully. Been following Morris for about an hour. Your feet ache and the streets are dark. And there's a housing residence turning corners here and there. Looking around, you realize so many of these houses have been put up for sale. The lawns are overgrown with scourges of mosquitoes buzzing about. You struggle to keep up with Lucian, but eventually Morris stops. Both you're on the corner, you're both yard corner from where Morris is. She does not far behind to chase their new prey. But the annoyance of buzzing pest aside as you and Lucian press up against the wall to hear the conversation Morris is having. Is that a snake woman? Yin, Yin. Morris? Get a glimpse of the other person. He's taller than the, than the boy by about a head. His frame is hidden by an oversized and tattered looking coat. Next to his feet is an old blue can. 
Ew, that would be a piss can. Oh, Morris, you must really spend the... Must we, you really spend this beautiful date night talking to the likes of me? Shut up and just give me the goods. With that mouth? No wonder you're single. All person hisses. Here. Pulls out a paper bag that Morris snatches away. Morris checks the contents of the bag. He's used raises as he grip, grips the bag tightly. Why do I count only five batteries? The deal was eight. The cost of manufacturing those batteries is rising, Morris, my boy. Everyone's in a tight spot in this economy, and I'm no different. But I need them. They get more money or not. Doesn't really matter to me. You scumbag. Please, feel free to take your business elsewhere. Oh, wait, there isn't anywhere else. How sad. Morris growls and sumps off into another corner. This guy is some kind of magic salesman? Maybe, but don't you think something is weird about his appearance? Not really. It looks like some homeless guy. Come on. Kobu, wait! Step out of the shadows to approach Gein. Hi there. Who goes there? Gein turns to the flourish and brandishes a knife. Up close, you can tell his average looking brown snake, brandishing a less than average looking knife. Whoa, whoa, calm down! Drilling courses through your veins, you raise your hands up in self defense. There's no telling what this guy would do. Put that down! Not until you identify yourselves. We're friends of Morris, that's all. Ha! Ah, Morris has no friends. Must be from the cult. The same leader finally has the balls to make a move, is it? No, we're not from anyone. Anyone? Come on, put the knife down and we can talk. Kobe would be out. Kobe went to Morrison Revolution. Oh man, that's a good question. You're breathing faster and faster. The tank leaps towards you, but Lucian intercepts and blocks the strike with a quick swing of the dagger like feather. Just as the feather appears instantaneously, he moves it as fast as the snake can notice it. did. The hands are moving a furry. Uh, up, he moves move in a flurry. Think like relentlessly stabs at the dog who barely evades each strike. When the attacks manage to land, cutting him, cutting him through, cutting through, ugh, through his arm. Morse counters with a kick to the snake's face. He takes the full brunt of the hit, toppling but stopping his fall with his tail and pouncing back up again. Then you notice know, something happening to the snake's form, though a layer of static is applied to him. Lucian makes a strike for the snake's face, Gein blocked in time, but he leaves himself wide open. His free hand, the angel grips Gein's abdomen. Lucian's right hand glows brightly and blasts the snake away. A of glass breaking emanates the air. Gein stumbles back, wave of wave like emotions form around him, his appearance morphs away into something else. What in the world? You watch stunned, the snake's neither demon or angel. Whatever power he radiates is, from, is a different class of being. The snake spins his blade and conjures another from thin air. Now why did you go and do that? No matter, no matter now, no matter now, no matter. Now it can kill you easier. Combat animations, oh hell yeah! Black Smokey trembled, little tendrils erupt from his back, each holding the same knife. The shadows lunge toward both of you. Turn flesh to ice, capture this moment in icy prison. By my name, suspend my phones in time. My foe in time. Beku. Fruity. Everyone is fruity. Ever notice how there's not a single fucking woman in this visual novel? Isn't that whack? Gust of icy cold wind blows these from the assailant's back. Got fucking blued! He's blue! Layer of white ice forms around him. It's more like blue ice. And black trindles slow to a stop, unable to reach you. In an instant, Gin is frozen. His smoky tendrils shatter, leaving only his frozen body behind. Clutching your chest, you breathe slowly and calm your nerves. Love a lane. What do you mean a lane? I don't. Who? Oh yeah, there is that one waiter. Tress Way. That's the name. That's what we named her. Tress Way. Oh, Elaine Idios. I'll play Idos and they give Elaine an NSFW CG. I know you got a bunch of gay artists, but come on. One of them has to know how to draw, but I can't say I can't say the word because YouTube will get very mad at me, but Look to your companion. His breathing is labored, but he quickly regains his composure. You okay? Yeah. Are you two insane? Or purposely trying to get yourselves killed to get to the underworld? Ah, that's a good question. Would that send him to the underworld? I was, uh, I was not going to say prawn. I was going to say the funny word for a cat. Morris stomps over towards you, bearing his tusk. 
You puff out your chest and look him in the eye. No, we came to look for help. Help that you denied us. And this was the smartest idea you could think of? Don't know who, don't you know who you're messing with here? Points the frozen snake. No, I don't. I don't care. I'll do whatever it takes to bring King back. Man. Kobo really has to figure out where all his powers have gone. Because again, he's the demon king. He should be able to settle most fights by just fucking looking at people. Boar snout blows hot air upon your face. He turns away, his hands beside his hip. Please, not for me. At least do this for King. No, he isn't a bad person, and he needs help. Morris, hear him out. I wouldn't go out of my way to get another mortal's help. I wouldn't go out of my way to get another mortal's help if it wasn't the only option. God. So hard to fucking narrate. God. Yes, this turns and locks eyes with you. The alpaca friend of yours really means that much to you. When we standing here without him. Turns around for a minute without saying anything. You and Lucian exchange nervous glances at each other as you await his answer. Going to regret this. I'll help. Your eyes beam with hope. Yay! To be clear, I don't trust either of you. You just demonstrated that you're both capable of causing deadly trouble just by showing up in places. Typical of celestial beings. Nothing bad really happened. Lucian's not dying or anything. Lucian conjures another feather that's big enough to cover the slash of the slashman's arm. Lays it onto the wound before the feather radiates and seals it up. I wonder if, an, if, an, if this innate healing is something most angels possess. Also, my very expensive and limited charm, which I had to use on the same guy who sold it to me. Anyways, I figured it'd be better if I keep a close eye on you two. Well, however, there is one condition. Once all of this over, both of you must leave Kibbleton. But, but that means saying farewell to King, farewell to the life you've made here. Struggle to form the words, but you know what must be done. What what must be done for King's sake? So you nod, your voice breaking as you speak. All right, help us, and it's a deal. Good. What do we need to do with this giant popsicle, though? We got to, we got to lock him away or finish him off. They're a mythical creature. They're dangerous. Yes, they are dangerous, but we also need their help. You mentioned something about a gate. Yep, there's a gate built to the underworld in town, but there are locks on it we can't open. You might know about it. Him? Walk over and tug at his thumb. Don't know if we can trust him. He did try to kill us. Crack. Oh shit! Back to the snake. Snake's thumb is broken off. Hey, don't mess with that. The spell is about to wear off. We should give it, we should, we should give it a try, mythical creature or not. Don't have any other way around this. Less Morris. Less Morris. Do you know how to get to the underworld? Or shakes his head. Also, Kobu, as you would advise me, lay from the whole mythical creature term. Be nice. Huh? Nods his head towards the frozen snake. Somehow he gives a hint that he's implying that it's too dangerous to feel too much around the snake. But the thumb? What do I do with it? Lucian? Oh, I don't know. Eat it? Lucian! Hang on to it. All right, the spell is coming down. Three of you stand around the snake. Three, two. Layer of ice around the snake evaporates away and gasp and coughs. Morris, you bastard. You dare to freeze me. I couldn't have you hurting my customers. I'm sorry, this might be a bad time, but I kind of broke this. I show the snake his thumb. The thug's crunch up face melts away to reveal silent horror. King quickly looks up at the bleeding stem where his thumb should be and then back at a kobu. Give me that. He snatches the severed body part from you, placing it on his left hand, and the thumb is enveloped in black smoke. The smoke gradually shrinks away, leaving only the reattached thumb. He addresses Morris once more. Customers, Morris? Yes, they are my very enthusiastic customers who followed me here. He reminded me I had to get something from you. Sure, this was a rocky introduction, but we can do business, can we not? Expect me to leave that dog with his, his leave that dog in his fist? That dog in his fist and that absent-minded looking cat are your just your customers? They broke my disguise. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I think you're hard to look at any in any form you take. He leers at Lucian. No oh, ho ho. Steps closer to the angel and they st he steps closer to the angel and stares him down. Snake's forked tongue darts in and out of his wicked smile. Such a big mouth on your pretty face. I want how I want to just put a muzzle on it. Lucian remains in phase, choosing to wear a bored expression towards Gein. Erickson puts a hand on Snake's shoulder. Step off, Gein. We need information. Who doesn't? Slaps Morris' hands away. Name your wish, plebeians. They need to know about how to open the gate to the underworld in town. 
he snake's eyes shine as his smile widens. How, pray tell, did you come to know about that? None of your business. I'm buying your discretion at the same time. He slithers. Snake tosses a set of pie. Even if I do know something about that skate, you know the boss won't be happy that I used what resources we have for activities outside the family. He wraps his tail around Morris and pulls him in close. Snake presses his face to Morris's. Snake's forked tongue almost brushes against the boar's on ears. He whispers, Tell me, how badly do you want it? Just name your price. Perfect. He slithers back to the side of the street. Well, I suppose I could have you and your so-called customers work on my list of chores here. Hello, Team Boke. Thank you. Oh, gross. Personally, not into snakes at all. Just not. Gross. No, I wouldn't even say gross. I'm fine with regular, like, animal snakes, but, like, fucking anthro snakes? Pass. If you haven't noticed, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed, the cult that's recently made it, made it to town is being a thorn on our side. Since they planted roots here, business has been going down. Afraid to ask, but just who exactly are you people? Alright, you're about to make a deal with an even more power. Uh, uh, a powerful creature in time. He's just feeling a little under the weather. Because of the shady little town, I suppose. That's right, you're right. You should be afraid. But know this, you're going to be making a deal with a very powerful family. The Rings. The Rings? Never heard of them. As you should. If you did, it would mean we have a few heads in the family. I mean, we have a few heads in the family to silence. The local folks refer to us at, as just the town gang. The gang. Looks like these bunch aren't, bunch aren't just an in-town nuisance around here. Back to the cult. At first, we assumed they were passing inconvenience, but they have been spreading their influence, spreading their influence that has reached the ears of our leader, Mr. K. You catch a tone of disgust when he mentions the leader. Mr. K has given me the honor to remove this eyesore of a cult, and I am forcing it upon you two. You're kidding. Why aren't I involved in this? Because you will be dealing with the second issue. What exactly do you need us to do? Get rid of the coal leader and destroy whatever they used to develop their influence. I get rid of, you mean, kill, run out of town, anything. Just make sure they can't, that, that scum can't try the same thing twice. Could, could just report them to the, could just report them to the police. The law moves too slowly and there's no guarantee the more important artifact the coal leader has won't be moved before they are caught. What artifacts? I looked into the group and learned that the majority of the members joined because of the leader's ability to predict people's deaths. In other words, by joining the cult, its members feel they are sheltered from death. Ridiculous. But it works. Did you find out what this artifact looked like? Uh, yes, the hood the leader wears. Destroy it, destroy the leader, and make sure you to snoop around with the computer computers as well. I mean, I figure the local gang would have more influence with the police than just the fucking convenience store clerk. <sighs> what are we searching for? Cult porn files? What are we searching for? Cult porn files of their orgies? Cults aren't built on faith and charisma anymore. These days, they require connections and lots and lots of money. Mostly illegally acquired, of course. Make sure to be thorough and scrub everything. Uh. Do this, and I'll give you information on how to get your keys. Hello, Zayazar. I don't like this. I should be helping them. I don't have the time. Our members reported that a demon has been leaving its presence around town. Demon? Illusion exchanged nervous glances. Here I was thinking. Here I was thinking who I could send for this, and here you are. It must be fate. Find where the demon lurks. Up, uh, up. Uh. Name of the game. He said it. And destroy it. He snort. What? Is something funny? Just a nervous twitch. Thinking about the demon. Whoa, hang on a minute. Getting way more out of this deal than we are. It's a demon, Morris. Run little creatures that will all be happier without. Tell you what, I'll be nice and even offer you the three remaining batteries you desire as payment. Morris growls. Give us a minute. Calls you and Lucian away from Gein. Or the snake. Do you want to do this? Wait, when he said demon, did he mean... No, I think it's something new. 
be another freelancer. What's that? The demons were after me. Look, I don't really, look, I really don't see any other, another way to get those keys. Morse takes a deep breath. Okay. You all return to Gain. We'll take the deal. Gain cackles maniacally. Excellent. Then let's shake on it. Third arm emerges from the stuff. Gross. Do I have to touch that? I don't have any disinfectant on me. Lucien. Fine. You all shake his hands. The moment your hands make contact, a jolt of burning energy spreads across the palm of your hand. What the hell? Pulling your hand away, you now have a black cube with you. What's this? I don't expect to get rid of the magical artifact. Activate the device when you have the artifact and it will unleash a powerful magic that will destroy it. Okay. Good luck, and if any of you plan to perish, do make sure your insurances are renewed. Keen in the sprite gallery. Uh oh. Is there like a storm going on where you are, Guild Archer? Or is your power just kind of bad? As time gets fingers, Keen disappears. There remains the old can by the wall. Three of you walk back the way you all, the way you all came. I'm officially checked out. Morris swipes the sweat from his brow. Ditto. Give me the bomb. I'm going to check it out. Pass the, you pass the black clue. The black clue. Black cube to Lucian. God. You guys want to grab something to eat? Six fans probably still open. You could get takeout. After the day I've had, I'll take it. But you're paying. Why me? Morris pat you on the shoulder. Because you're my customer. And them's my terms. I'm grown, but you follow him either way. Lucian doesn't say much during the walk. His attention taken up completely by the cube. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. Don't know what's going on with your electricity, man. They walk to six fans, feels like a march through a field of landmines. Can I? Shake the f you can't help but shake the feeling that every person that passes you could be a mythical creature in disguise. The Lucian and Morris seem untroubled. Yo, fucking... The things you see... The Ah, oh, man. I fucking hate TikTok because it peddles so much misinformation. Like, there are niggas openly advocating for tetanus. Like, dude... No. Black box. Black. What do you mean, black box? Though. You arrive at six fans at about eight p.m. Even during dinner, the Russian experiences a drought of customers. I mean, at least you're fixing it. More gestures towards the quiet booth in the corner. Lucian Morris sit across from you. Or you start as you take a start, take a seat, unable to brush off the uneasy feeling from earlier. Are you okay? You look kind of jumpy. I'm just being careful. Howdy, everyone. Oh my god. The waitress that offered Lucian the job the day before. Sorry to whoa, sorry to spook y'all. You okay there, Peaches? You hold out your hand to your chest as you nod response. And Lucian, what a coingy dink. I was just about to text you after closing up. Lucian raised an eyebrow at her. You've got the job, sweetie. You can start tomorrow at 11 a.m. I even have a uniform picked out for you. Hell yeah! Better be kinky. Yeah, you look about my ex-husband's size, so it should fit nice and snug. I suspect uh, an expect result. What about the matter of my pay? With a standard $2.50 an hour for a 12-hour shift. I don't expect to be in this town for long. May I request my pay be given at the end of each week? Sure thing, sweetie. I have that arrangement set up with our chef. How fortunate. I'll be at your service tomorrow. Two of them shake on the deal. Lucian, introduce me to your charming young friend. I'm Morris. Oh, oh, you, oh, you, I'm old enough. Oh, no, wait, what I mean to say is thank you. 40 is the new 30. That's what they say. That's what I say. The name's Cora. Like the fucking website. Is she going to get a sprite? Because she's a named care. I hope she gets a sprite. I mean, yeah, but that's standard fare for um fucking waiters and stuff. Remember? This takes place, I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I mean, at least that's standard pay for waiters, so I'm assuming this takes place in America. They get tips. Cora, huh? That's the first time I've heard of that. If that even is your real name. What my friend means to say is, that's a beautiful exotic name. 
How are you giving that name, if you don't mind me asking? Kubo, 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 Kubo. Kobo, there we go. Kobo quit being weird. Not at all. My mama gave it to me because of the name of the flower, she said, after her home was burnt down from volcanic eruption. Whoa, volcano? You and I need to have coffee talking more about that one day. Or giggles. Why don't I take y'all's orders first? She hands you all a menu each. The minute browsing the menu, y'all place your orders and have a table to yourselves. More scowls in your direction. What's with you? I'm sorry, I'm just worried there's an enemy hiding in our midst. I mean, mythical creatures could be anyone. Relax, you can see through their disguises. You've got nothing to worry about. I can confirm that. Oh, that's good. I suppose. Lucian purses his lips. Wait, how come you haven't tuned your eyes to the gang's magic? I'm in my parallel state? Bad enough, their magic is a totally different breed from ours. Lucian leans forward. Give it a try. I'll never know for sure if you never make an effort. Alright, but how do I know if it's working? Here. The seal is a copy of the alarm spell they used to detect demons entering the town. Can you see the symbol on this? Or produces a slip of paper smaller than the palm of your hand. Doesn't appear to be anything on it. Sun Wukong. Like so many tips. I don't. Good. Then try adjusting your vision to it. Vision takes the paper and holds it in front of you. Eyes narrow as you concentrate as hard as you can on the paper. You stare harder, picturing your mind the shape and feel the mythical pa mythical creature's magic you've seen thus far. And your neck throbbing as you concentrate harder. Lucian looks concerned. Kubo, you okay? Right. Your whole head is practically vibrating at this point. Plex circle burns in the shape on the paper. I see it. There's a circle. There's hope for you yet. Concentrate harder. Stare, stare. Your star appears within the circle. Then a stroke above the eye. Ugh. It's like your eyeballs are about to pop out of your head. Hamon. Wait, you mean Hamon as in the spell from Persona, not like the thing from JoJo's? Okay. Beads of sweat trickling on your temples. Curse the remaining lines for not appearing yet. Out of gasp, you fall back into your seat. Can't, I give. Peter is so close. Try harder. Wave your hand in front of the oblivious angel. That's all I've got. Undrake messed up my magic, in case you've forgotten. Mm -mm. Angel hands the paper back to the boar. Can't leave you in this state. The ring becomes hostile, you'll be a sitting duck. I am open to suggestions. No worries, I can whip up a few more charms to let you see through the disguises. For a price, of course. Oh, I'm not surprised. One of all the jobs in the underworld being Demon Lord is the most boring of all. Ever since Paul revolutionized the system, there's nothing to do but follow paperwork, go to meetings, for new torture techniques, go to meetings, announce that the announce they have new office printers, go to more meetings, review every single Demon's Works performance, go to more fucking meetings, and, and about the next meeting. Wow, why are there so many fucking meetings? Or this. No, a core is not added. How am I not surprised? Oh! Hang on. God damn it, I keep missing. Oh. In order to perceive magic, you must first attune yourself to each specific type of magic. This is all the base of singing through illusion and disguises. When growing up around all kinds of magic, I'm actually most of it. This is until the event that is until the day Vendor accepts me. I can tell that my natural awareness of magic is weakened. Since since then, it's like I'm a blocked nose. At least I can smell King's delicious cooking. Ah. Uh. Vendrake fucked him up. Fucked him up good. <laughs> what was the fucking uh, the Shadow the Hedgehog fan dub? Yeah, you fucked me up good. Almost my power is going to re reconstruct my internal energy energies and organs. I already clicked it, but there's no third page. All I ask is more detail as the about both of your places of business. After after all, how often can an exorcist say so the chance to share a table with a demon lord? I already see where this is going. There are consequences to learning about our world, you know. And we just didn't need. After the day I had, I don't want to ponder on how revealing secrets of the afterlife will pull your soul down into an existential hole never to return again. Yeah, they're really good friends. Even they even been inside each other's houses. Relax. I'm just taking the chance to save my curiosity. Besides, existential dread and eternal damnation is part of the job. What guarantee do I have that you're not going to sell this information to the highest bidder? 
my 100% money back guarantee, and take customer confidentiality very seriously. He flashes you a toothy grin. Fine, you want to be careless with your soul, humor your questions until our food arrives. Excellent, so is the beef between demons and the rings. I take it the feelings are mutual? Not just the rings, that gain, they're part of an entire species we call mythical creatures. Their origins are a mystery even to us. What we do know is that some mythical creatures have powers that can rival demons and angels. You frown. However, unlike angels and demons who work to maintain the balance of the world, their kind seek to destroy and spread their own influence. Morris flurries an eyebrow. They're known to steal souls from mortals, so twist them into their willing slaves. Though small in number, their influence was all over Earth during the Great War. Then what happened? Well, my dad came into the scene, formed a powerful spell never seen before, and poof, they were gone. By poof, you mean he eradicated them, or so I thought. Some must have fallen through the cracks and, re and have reorganized themselves. Pretty drastic, don't you think? Wiping out an entire species? It wasn't drastic. The records show that mythical creatures were ruthless tyrants looking out for themselves. All mortal life could have been wiped out if they were left to amass more power. Paul did what he had to do. He was the reason the underworld, and by proxy, by proxy above us, was saved. So watch your back when you get when you're when you're with that game. I always watch my back. More stern solution. Kobu the <laughs> fucking oh Kobu the morally great protagonist. What about you guys? Oh my god, the mythical creatures are like Quincy's. This is just like my anime's Bleach. They fucking up with the balance of souls. They got genocided for it. What about you guys? The angels don't have anything to say about the mythical creatures? Li Jin clasped his hands together. I was born after the war. From what I taught, from what I was taught, up above was busy rebuilding its grounds, not the underworld to handle the mythical creature epidemic. And around that time, God issued an order for us to withdraw from Earth. We stopped meddling in Earth's affairs, leaving prayers no longer answered. The mission was to concentrate on catching the escaped souls of the underworld and keep up above running. Morris, you've been with the rings. You've been with the rings. Do you know if the underworld gate is part of any bigger plot against the underworld? Morris shrugs. Beats me. I only contact a gang when I purchase exorcism, exorcism tools for when I'm working on my debt. I don't know anything about what they're going what what they're going what they're going to do with that gate. Oh yeah, Lucian oh, Lucian is younger than Kobu. You rest your chin up on your hand and sulk. How are you questions why you're so concerned about the gang's plan for plans for your former place of work? Well, you also can't help but worrying about what is to come. Backtrack a bit. Backtrack a bit. What what was this about a great war the underworld was a part of? My grandfather was, um, dissatisfied with his position to put it lightly. He was well known for hating how the underworld was stuck with the scum of earth and felt the denizens of up above disrespected his authority. It was a clear case of envy. Kobo's grandfather wanted the glory and worship God was getting from Earth, and started a war to get it. Not only childish act, no offense, I'm taken. And really is so great that even the demon lord wanted in. I've got to ask, how do you determine who goes where? Your nose wrinkles, the uneasiness in your stomach settled. Curious to see how a mortal re would react to what you tell him. When any mortal life expires, they are brought to the first level of the underworld. Imagine a huge building where you and millions of other souls are lining up to be assigned your place in the underworld or up above. We call it the Department of Mortal Vitality. A DMV. Like where you go to get your driver's license sorted. Heh. <laughs> yep. Okay, go on. They run the usual tests, colorblindness tests, written comprehension, and even evaluation of your soul score. And the last one, that's the most important one. Your life history is reviewed by the demons there, and a final score, be it positive or negative, will determine your place. Well, what if they get a zero? I usually send them back in line to get tested again. By the time they arrive, they'll show their true colors. Hold on, I've got a bone to pick. I don't think there's already predetermined rules about what actions cause your soul to score soul score to rise and fall during judgment. There is it's an extensive list of choices that take into account circumstances and consequences of each action. Seems to me that mortals would benefit greatly if they had, access, they had access to that list. How so? Based upon my observations, the mortals are scaring about without a clue as about as how to live. We ask them to live honorable lives, but we never tell them how. Above sent holy scriptures down when they were when, down when they were founded, but such things did little in guiding mortals on the right path. Can you blame us? Those scriptures were vague at best. Anyone who could read could twist those messages into who knows what. An example of why your kind is nothing but a nuisance, tainting, tainting the kindness of our Lord for your own ends. What a waste. Give people the power of premonition, the power to see the end of their choice, it would do it. It would do the world a whole lot of good. 
do we agree or disagree chat Can be easier to do this yes or no agree or disagree that this it's just easier for me to keep track of a poll do we agree chat yeah do we agree to this there for those who want to read it this music it's neat God, I need a shave. Is that everyone? Going once. Going twice. Sold. To disagree. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Picture it. Everyone knows the fate of their actions. There's no reason to pick the wrong option. That's just it. They have to pick what's right. They're living for the sake of it. You're living for the sake of it, there's no different to how you told me there. Oh, told me you hate to lie, even if it's for a good cause. I did say that. Hard to imagine people being happy when they're lied to. No matter the good that lie might have done or the cause they championed, they would be shunned by those they deceived. Though I suppose you could argue that people can grow into their lies. How so? Like people who say they aren't good at talking to others, but then they get a job in retail. They'd be forced to talk day in and day out. The smile might be fake at first, but eventually they grow into the role. I guess I'm saying it's not impossible that people can't become honorable if they keep, if they have to keep doing honorable things. Now that's one way to spin it. Though I believe in a world where people generally, though I believe in a world where people generally want to do good, and we give them the chance to see the, see the far-reaching consequences of their actions. I think that would bring a world where there won't, won't be a need for war, deceit, or hatred. Alright, let's go with that. Let's assume people are generally good and want to do good. Won't that just make a world where everyone is satisfied by doing the same thing over and over again? Because that's what guarantees them their place in up above? You're not actually suggesting that people get better by committing sins. I think Kobu got, Kobu, Kobu's got a point there. Sometimes you have to mess things up before you figure out what's the right thing to do. Yushin looks at the poor with a quizzical expression. Well, I hate to admit it, but growing up, I was pretty desperate to find a group to roll with. Back when I was shrinking in the monastery, I got caught up trying to steal a barrel of beer from the nearby village. Old man Kinox paid the price for my mistakes. I remember I hurt to say the grown line taking the verbal beating for me. I knew damn well I screwed up bad, and it helped me sort out some things about myself. What a bizarre line of thought. I can't imagine what would become of up above if we, encouraged, if we were encouraged to make mistakes. You're comparing apples to oranges. Now that you think about it, maybe that's the reason we never gave we never gave a name name to that list. We call it all the actions listed as sins, but really it's merely actions and consequences. You aren't really quantifying something as bad or good. Applying such logic to, cr logic to creatures like mortals would not work. Lucian bites his lip lower and looks back down at the table. It's like mulling over what you all have discussed. You yourself wonder if you made any sense in defending your stance. The table falls silent for a minute or two before Quora returns with your food. Wow, what's with all the long faces? Oh, well, you know, we're just discussing which is better. Boxes or briefs. Or giggles. Well, I hope the food will lighten the mood. Morris actually has like charisma. Or not even char yeah, charisma. He's just capable of like holding a good conversation, you know. The colorful smell lifts your spirits a little. Waitress sets the food in front of you, in front of each of you, and takes her leave. Yummy noodles, nom nom nom. God, I hate a fucking bot problem on Twitter. Get out of my mentions. Lucian ordered a basket of plain fries. I was about to fucking. I was just about to mention that we didn't get any details on what food they ordered. Morris got seafood lasagna with a side of brownies, while he got a plate of chicken fillet, grilled and sauteed with mushrooms, broccoli with a side of mashed potato. God, big ear. Let's dig in.
You attack, you attack your food with the gusto of a man stranded on a desert island for days. Taste buds delight a juicy chicken paired with a salty sauteed mushrooms. Sauteed. Hello, Solenite. Yes. Wait, you've, you've been here for a while. Oh. oh, I gotta stretch my legs, chat. Looking over at the angel, he is using a fork to pick up each individual french fry and biting delicately in to eat into them. Lucian, just use your hands. I'm barbaric. I don't want to sully my holy hands. It's fine. Some people eat fries. Plus, it tastes good, and you get, get to lick the salt off your fingers. That's gross, Kobu. Lucian's eyes narrow. That sounds like a recipe for an upset stomach. Don't worry about it. Here, I'll show you. Tempt to reach for Lucian's fry before he pulls the basket away. Ah, uh ah, -uh, this is mine. I believe it's a mortal custom to exchange pieces of food that equivalent in this situation. <laughs> Fine, I'll show you my broccoli. You want to get rid of your vegetables, don't you? Lucian, I would never. Then I'll let you have a fry if you eat that vegetable. Morris, want to trade a brownie for my broccoli? Morris blinks twice in your direction, quickly stuffing all the brownies in, in his mouth. <laughs> What the fuck does that mean? Yeppers peppers? Ugh. I haven't, done any, I haven't done any stretches in a while. I really should get back. I should fucking get back to doing at least some exercise, you know? Morris! Face the facts, Kobu. You're stuck with that little green tree. You can dig this fork into his basket again and pulls out a broccoli florette. It will go the fry you swished. When Lucian wasn't looking, and bite into it. Ah! <laughs> That's foul play, you, you demon. Not my fault, you weren't paying attention. All's fair, love and food, Lucian. Smooth, you might do good at the casino. Don't encourage him. The rest of your dinner continues on with you and Lucian passing broccoli back and forth. In the end, it was never eaten. Good job. Great, at the end, the three of you get ready to part ways. Uh, I don't know about you two, but I'm stuffed. Yeah. That dinner was worth it. Wait a minute. Hey, I got so swept up in your questions, I didn't ask you anything about the gang. You snooze, you lose, champ. Your right eye twitches as you frown. Don't worry, you'll get your chance to ask me all you want after we meet again. Stay focused on the task at hand. On your eyes, you have hardly accept the exorcist's reply. Oh, I'll head home. Well, I'll head back home. Tomorrow, we're going to start on dealing with that demon. Be careful, there's no telling what they're capable of. I'd worry more about how you two are going to take down the cult leader. We'll figure something out. I've got Lucian by my side. That goes without saying. Also, Morris, would you mind lending me one of those mythical creature seals? I think it would be handy for Kobu's training. Training? Oh, sure. I can spare one. I'll see you guys when I'm done from my side. Morris heads off. What's this training you're talking about? Training to get your powers to working levels, but first, let's go home. Cucumber. Honestly, cucumbers are fucking great. He grabbed your hand and pulled you close to his chest. Well, what are you doing? I thought it'd be faster if we flew back. No, I mean, I suppose it would, but won't people see us? We'll be looking in the skies at this time of night. You don't know that. Let's just walk. Ugh, man, that was ugh, ugh. Bad close of birth on that. Close of burst on that one. You place a hand against his chest, trying to build some distance from him, but somehow he can't bring yourself to push him. Gay boy. Your hand buried against his exposed chest, the one to his first spreads through your palm. Thread spreads through your palm. <laughs> Sorry, I read something stupid on Twitter. Retweeting it, because it's funny. Uh... Thank you for the offer, anyways. Being so close, you're keenly aware of the high difference between the two of you. Tommy nods and turns ahead in the direction of your apartment. Keeps you warm as you follow from behind. I didn't know Studio Trigger was doing Dungeon Meshy. All this, all this time, all the two of you walk beside each other. 
few glances at the angel, your thoughts would not leave you alone. He was pretty helpful today. Maybe I should tell him that. No, no, no. Probably be all like, you impressed by that? How cute. I'm being silly. Look at him again, all aloof. Sign, you bury your hands in your pockets and keep walking. Okay, boy. After some time, you and Lucien reach your apartment. As you enter, you stretch your arms out while letting out a satisfied groan. Getting warnings on your retweets? What? I'm beat. You can your shoulders from behind. Kobu. The ocean? There's something I need to check. Would you mind taking off your clothes? Oh, of course. What? It's nothing like that. I want to test my theory about your powers. Your training hinges on this. Lead, lead, well, lead with that next time. What's this idea, anyways? Your powers began to fail after you were kicked out of the underworld, right? Right. Vendor hit me with a blue orb. After that, I lost basically every ability. There must still be some remnants of your powers in you. After all, you can still see demonic and angelic magic. I mean, I've lost pressure, among other things. I can open some portals, but they're not stable. And I want to find out where, where, blah, 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 where your source of power lies inside you. Maybe I dig deep enough, I can free it. Healing is a specialty of angels. I guess that's worth a try, but do I really need to get naked? Your underwear will suffice, Kobu. It's easier for me to trace magic with fur on fur contact. Sure. Sure it is. Sure it is. Lucian, if you only want to have a piece of this, you can just say so. You chuckle as you raise your arms behind you. Your head and sh right, raise your arms up your head and shake your hips. You notice I'm staring at your bare chest. Mm, now that I see you and smell you, would you mind taking a shower before we start? Right, later. Let's get this over with. Angel closes his eyes and takes a deep breath. Is he bracing himself or having second thoughts? Uh, what? <laughs> Fine, get on the bed. Woo! <laughs> That's what he said. You dive blindly onto your unkept mattress like a Susan Pro. He who? I honestly don't know. Just felt like something I should say at the time. Uh huh. <laughs> this fucking. This fucking visual novel! <laughs> this thing gets on the floor as it cra all crawls on top of you. As wide and as you're taking the side of the mad angel's piercing blue eyes, tingling sensations spread from your chest and slowly up to your face. Bends down to your snout, it bends down, your snout's almost touching one another. Just breathe and I'll help and I'll find your spot. <laughs> Chuckle. You have no idea how dirty that sounds. Angel presses a cold nose against your neck and sniffs your mane. You shudder, your body shudders from the contact. Sex all you can think about. Don't knock it till you try it. Rest, his, rest the back of his hand on your forehead. Why would demons engage in procreation? Aren't you afraid of the impact you would leave on the mortals? I mean, we have rules against that, but it's not something we can enforce easily. Only guarantee is that, with the exception of the demon lord, the also your demons and mortals usually don't survive conception. Even if they did, almost none live long enough for us to be understand what they are. And his hand moves down to, th down to your right cheek. So, who do you usually meet for your escapades? You know, who's willing to hang out and party, really? Spend two, we spend a week or two having the best time of our lives, and I'm out of there. And behind, well, nothing. Got to wipe their memories, after all. Curious. Lucian bends lower and rests, your ha rests his head on your chest. I want to get the feeling you that you don't believe me. From his observations, he seems, to be the type, he seems to be the type who prefers consistency. I wonder what this means, considering your history of chasing desire. I, I'm not sure how to answer that. Oh, CG! He slides it lower, now resting upon your stomach. You raise your arms, unsure where to put them. Lower your voice, I hear something. The angel's eyes seem, the angel's eyes seem to shine under, under his intense gaze. Run his fingers through your short fur, his touch feels so gentle and comforting you could purr. The warmth of his face spreads throughout your body. It's a, pleasant, it's a pleasantness that you're not even sure you felt before. I aren't supposed to be racing? You never totaled before. All the many partners you've held in your arms, but there's something uniquely comforting about Lucian. The fact that he's magic seems to light up the room itself. These feelings, they befuddle you. 
It's like having a favorite pillow on top of you. He feels so comfortable just being here with him. What? Why the fuck did chat disconnect? Okay. Good. Stream's not dead. I hear your ma I hear your magic. Uh huh. You and Gross and come to properly pay attention. It's waxing and waning like there's something holding it back. I wonder. In a little stupor, a thought lingers in your mind. I want to pat him. I would just let him do his thing. Yes, I'll pet the doggo. Don't do it. Don't weird him out. I'll pat him and call him a good boy. The right hand reaches out and pat, pat the back of Lucian's head. Hair smooth as silky, your strands slipping through your fingers. Amazing today, Lucian. Huh? His eyes wide and his jaw dropping. Drop. His eyes what is his wide eyes and drop jaw I'll cause you to think you've done something wrong. I I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> you oh, we totally are cheating on King. No, he plays hand on top of yours, so you won't take it away. Which is a surprise. It feels pleasant. You may continue. Please. Your face turns somewhat shade of red, you're not back of the angel. You need to pat the golden bundle lying on top of you. Your thumps against the bed. Never been touched by like this before? No, it's always been a wish that God would pat me and tell me I did good, though. Does Gary real, really give that good pats? Continue by scratching around his ear. Lucian pants on and smiles. It's more than that. It's about being acknowledged by perfection, by our creator. So is Gary like a father to you, angels? At least in my eyes. There's so much for up above, and we all strive to make him proud. Rome's full of classy angels like you. No wonder Earth or the Underworld can compare to that. Above is the crowning jewel of life, the Nirvana all are in search of. What's it like to be part of that? I can't feel- it can feel like you're a tiny piece amidst a sea of stars. Sounds kind of overwhelming, to be honest. Is a grip on your fur titans? Sometimes it is. Lucian? It's nothing. Just a passing thought. You're saying you're going to help me find- oh, you're helping me to get Gary to praise you. It's my wish that it would some see me amongst the crowd. Well, I see you. We'll stop talking and stare into each other's eyes. Gay! Okay, thank you, I. Your heartbeat pounds loudly in your ears. I see you too, Kabu. I think we can move on to the next stage. Right, we're doing that stuff. Yes. Sit up while Lucian is on his knees, avoiding your gaze. Uh oh. I know how to undo sp the. I don't know how to undo the spell that's weakening you, but perhaps I can share with you some of my powers. At least enough for you to start being useful in battle. I'm talking about mixing angelic and demonic magic together. Something weird is something weird. Is there something weird that's going to happen? I doubt it. I've read that it has happened before. Most a temporary solution. Just trust me. I do trust you. So how are we doing this? For this, I need to be in contact with you. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. See the angel's hands sliding up, up, sliding up on, onto your hips and his forehead touching yours. Hello, man. He's cold often. His voice falls to a soft whisper. Don't fight it. Just, okay. Metaphors. Feel the warmth. Feel the warmth of his breath. Feel the warmth of his breath against your lips. Nothing happens at first. This builds in from your insides, like deep, like dipping your body into a hot spring. Into a hot spring. Temperature escalates as seconds tick by. Ah! Bright flash of light envelops your mind. Your entire body stiffens as energy courses inside of you. Gary. Lucian. That voice. Gary. Voice echoes in your mind. You realize this isn't real. Your name will be Lucian. You may, you may be a bright light under our guest as per your namesake. What is this? Look, a man should conjure a feather. You should know this isn't really him. You real. Just the one I suppose I will do. Look, a man should conjure 50 feathers at a time. Hey, sorry, now that's how you do it. Learn from Saria, Lucian. Oh. Why should I still close for fleeting into the abyss? Each time bringing frag fragmented conversations that confuse you. These voices from Lucian's memories? I got a job to capture a dangerous spirit on Earth. It was worth 500 points. Lucky you, I'm on a high point job. I'm just assisting building new wings for the new souls. I'm using 300 points. What about you, Lucian? I'm collecting blueprints ideas from the souls. Again. Chin up, even low point jobs are important. Your day will come. We all just gotta do our part for up above. Yeah. Voices speaking to Lucian laugh as they fade away. But Gary, why would I be good enough to be by your side? Art sinks at those words. You sense the, uh, you sense the flow of energy has stopped. 
Here's Twitch at the sound of Lucian shuffling away from you. It's done. Open your eyes. You're still in your room. Lucian tilts his head to the side. How do you feel? Still the same, I think. You didn't say anything just then, did you? I could hear voices in your head. Strange, you didn't say anything. What did you hear? I could hear you speaking to the other angels. Uriel and Sariel, I believe. What exactly did these Uriel and Sariel say? You guys are comparing your power prowess at conjuring feathers and discussing the task of slain to you. Lucian chuckles but doesn't look you in the eyes. Ah, so transferring my powers leaks in my memories. Don't worry, just forget about them. The random conversations at work. That's all. Okay, so did it work? Lucian pulls out the seal he borrowed from Morris. Like one way to find out? Turn your eyes to the gang's magic once more. You concentrate on the paper in the angel's hand, remembering the feel and smell of the mythical creature's magic. Starry eye with ten strokes appear on the paper almost instantaneously. I see it! It works! It's working! You did it! High five! Raise your hand in the air, trying to high five the angel. What? Why are you showing me the palm of your hand? Smack my palm, silly. It's a high five. People do this when they're excited. Oh, alright. Raise your left hand and awkwardly pushes it against your palm. Egg, yeah, enough. Can't try to hide it. I can't wait to try my powers again. I wonder how many of them have returned. Raise your right hand. It's something to summon a portal, but Lucian gently brings it down. Save that for later. I have to admit it, but I'm very tired of the transferring of powers over to you. Oh my god, this is what they did with Bleach when Rukia stabbed Ichigo. You're a Soul Reaper now, Kubo. Kobu, there you go. I know his name. Alright, we should sleep. Thank you, Lucian, for the magic. Think nothing of it. However, if you must show gratitude, I'd rather much prefer you keep your word and shower first before resting. Angel pinches his nose to estimate his point. I'll be on guard duty. I'd rather have my nostrils first to be assault for to be assaulted by your robust musk. Why is every furry visual novel use the word fucking musk? God, awkward. Really, you're going to work even though you're tired. It's for our own good. Fine, we'll at least have a bath after me. Certainly. Yeah, sure, it's what they did. I know what the Nasuverse is like. I've looked up the lore of Tsukahime. Or at least the fucking Melty Blood. That's hello, Sako. You seen smiles as you leave to bathe, thus ending your night. Oh no! I hear from you. Yeah, Discord. That was nice. Yes, please. I still like how they gave us the option. It's a weird goatee. Just notice that. I'm guessing I have to do the other character options. Right. That's nice. In. Doesn't have any different expressions. Yeah, I would, but honestly, I'm fucking feeling it now, Mr. Krabs. I don't know if I need to go to bed, eat some fucking food, or do what, but oh my god. So what did you think of where the demon lurks, chat? Oh, man. I don't know what the fuck is up with me. Go to bed. Oh, can't go to bed. I'm not nearly done enough with fucking video for this week. There's a reason I didn't upload like a Patreon preview chat. It's because I only have like three minutes done. Yeah, I do like the VN. I love the way they play with sprites. It's all so wonderfully goofy.
Oh, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's probably, you should probably, you should probably should tell me there's, if there's a new version or something out. I totally don't pay enough attention to things to know that. I do like this high fantasy, well, not this high fantasy, urban fantasy VN. It's, it's very nice. I don't know. Got anything? Got anything to say, Chad? Because oh boy, I'm feeling something. I'm not sure if it's tired or hungry or what. It probably is. I don't know. I definitely wouldn't be able to record that. So probably works out better this way. Yeah, we should do that. But well, I mean, the f uh, current run I'm doing is three characters you like, but everyone else hates. Three characters you hate, but everyone else likes. I uh, got a few Amicus comments. Legosi, Sajin Kamamura, a few others from where I don't necessarily say obscure visual novels, but whatever. But yeah, I gotta go. Thank you for being here, Law, Gilded Archer, Team Boak, Zacho, Choron, Good Old Days, Law. Oh, did I say I did say Law? Well. Pretty sure there were a few others. Names I can't remember. My God, how the fucking migrant, Carlos? Cause fucking damn it. I have no idea what's going on with me. I drank water. I did that during stream chat. I'm pissed, so I don't know, man. Well, I might be just remember to name 100 women. That's what you do during Easter? I mean, more power to you, but that's a lot of women. Anyways, I gotta go. Do be sure to tune in on Sunday for the fucking video, if I can get off my ass and actually make it. And tune in on Monday for whatever the fuck we stream then. We'll figure that out when we get there. A Women's History Month thing. Uh, isn't isn't today isn't like fucking this weekend Easter Sunday or something actually? Easter Sunday. I knew it. We're getting closer to June and the release of SMT five five and Elton Ring DLC. Oh yeah, there is a solar eclipse. It's all fucking ad about that. I'm gonna play Elden Ring DLC, but whatever. 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 Thank you all for watching. Uh, I really do gotta go, so. Uh MZ five R? What do you mean? Monk die video. Oh, April Fools. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, you the April Fool's stuff Osama does. I do, I do look forward to that. But anyways, I do got to go. Thank you all for watching. Do be sure to tune in on su Sunday for whatever, for the video, if I manage to get it done. And tune in on Monday for whatever you stream then. Thank you for watching. And as all, thank you for watching. Link to the Kofi and Patreon in the description. And as always, th this is Joe's Fury signing out. Bye.